Hello everyone, Santa here. Welcome to my Guild Wars 1 stream. Uh, we're going to get started on Girudo in a moment here, but we'll have some pretty music playing. Uh, I just want to mention something. Uh, I have finally, at long last, implemented template drafting. So we might take a look at this at some point here. I don't know if it'll be today or not. Maybe, maybe we'll do something on this later. Uh, just because I have a different thing going on with the character that I'm playing through because I'm using a skill booster league. Template drafting is a different thing entirely. But template drafting is, is finally here. Uh, and for the VOD watchers as well as those listening in at this point in time, uh, there will be a uh, video going live on Monday on my YouTube channel uh, where I go over this program uh, in terms of like things that it does fairly thoroughly. So uh, that's something that you can be on the lookout for. Uh, and for those of you who are not VOD watchers, here is a link to my YouTube. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So when last we left off, I was in the Crystal Desert. And I don't see that changing imminently. Ah, yes. Armor plus 10 versus the undead. Fantastic. Um, so I th think what I'm going to do at the moment is, um, let's see, I want to get to dunes, I guess leaving from Augury Rock. Yeah, let's just go, let's go, just, just go get some places on our map. Uh, let's just do that for the moment. Um, that sounds like a good plan to me. I should probably set Mubot up to give some automatic updates on things, but I have not. I also need to figure out this guy's die scheme. I haven't dyed his armor at all. I mean, eventually... I don't, oh, that's enchanting? I might want to hang on to that then. Probably why that's in there. Um, Eventually I want to uh, get this guy the rest of his Lux armor, but I still haven't gone around and gotten myself enough Lux infection for that, so... Eh. It is what it is. That's what I say. Part of why I'm playing this guy, by the way, is because I just want to get him through all of the other campaigns and stuff uh, before heading off to uh, do Winds of Change. Because I kind of want to play through all of the base campaigns with the uh, restricted build stuff, but I don't want to do Winds of Change with it. So, just for simplicity's sake. Ow. Well, that guy showed me. Hope y'all are doing well today. I know there's a lot of different stuff going on, so. Desert bus is going on right now. Uh, GlitchCon, apparently, is a thing that's going on right now. I have no idea what's going on with that, though. Just been getting Twitch's marketing about it. There we go. Got to get ghostly vengeance somehow, right? I think that guy, m nope, nope, just wanted to get his trap down. Oh, I don't want to walk over there, though. Or whatever, you can run off. Uh, now I'm... Okay. It is Saturday, like I thought it was. You ever have one of those where, like, I can't remember days of the week anymore. Moments... I need to salvage and otherwise clear out some of my inventory stuff. Hey, fear! Seven months. Whoo. Congratulations on that. Good to see ya. Hope you're doing well. It does. It does have a tendency of doing that, doesn't it? Am I better off? I don't know. 
I might try taking this teleporter. I don't know if it'll avoid stuff or not. Just that way you can see it. Template draft. I can start draft rounds. I can set the party size to something. Uh, I don't... I don't have any draft decks right now, other than just like the default challenge templates, so uh, there's not a whole lot of options, but I can. Uh, today I'm primarily just working on, like I do want to do stuff with template drafting at some point in time, but I also kind of want to put together some like actual interesting things to draft with. Um, like, I can show how it works. You just hit start draft round, and it starts a draft round. And you got some templates. Uh, and then you, you pick one. And apparently I get to pick an assassin if I want. So this is a ranger. I think... I think I'm going to grab this one. Like, this is how this works, right? As you just kind of grab stuff. Do you want to be keeping an eye out for, like... Monk builds. I'm not going to do anything with this right now. I'm just showing how it works, right? Okay, well, there's a healer build, but it's not one I like. Um, ooh. I mean, I need to be picking those up, so. And, uh... How about this one? And then you can save a couple uh, and for the next round and stuff. So that's how it works. Uh, but what I'm what I'm doing today is I'm just getting getting Gerudo Senso through the rest of the campaigns uh, using the league that I started with him way back in the day before uh, venturing on to new to Winds of Change stuff. So that's my plan. We might do some of that template draft stuff after a little bit, though. So maybe I'll do a couple different things today. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you're getting pretty close, then. That's exciting. So you've been doing vanquishes, or what have you been doing for uh, getting title points? Good, I didn't explode in traps. I was a little worried about that. Always am with when dealing with those guys. They do like their traps. But yeah, I spent uh, still quite a bit of master, though. Yeah, they're at like first of all, the thing the thing about master that's a little bit uh that's important to remember is it looks at both normal mode and hard mode. Um it's more HM dungeons, some vanquishing. Gotcha. Uh so what that means is like doing the dungeons in normal mode and hard mode, doing the uh the mission like the campaign stuff in normal mode and hard mode. Um Doing the vanquishes. Cartography counts towards it, too, I think. So. It's... If you're doing all of the dungeons in normal mode and hard mode and all the missions in normal mode and hard mode and all the vanquishes, that's what I did to get it, so. Poodle Sizzlehorn. You'd think something named Sizzlehorn would be an elementalist, not a necromancer. And here we are. You'd be wrong. Okay, that's where I want to get. Looks like I should be able to take this teleporter. Uh, just turn off hard mode. It will it will show them for normal mode if you're in normal mode and hard mode if you're in hard mode. No, it has no cartographer title. I think cartography is bundled into Master of the North. It has no separate cartography. 
Has no separate Vanquisher either. Or Guardian or any of that, so. It just like bundles all of its like do the things into Master of the North. Which is kind of one like mega title. Well, that's not gonna work. So it does kind of its own thing. That's an unusual route. I haven't usually used the teleporters like that. Normally I'd have walked down there, but I think this is actually not a bad way to go. To get to uh, Hero's Audience, I think it is. Unless my memory is failing me, which it might be. It's been a little bit since I've been over here. Oh, right. You need to get off the eruption before your antidote signal will be able to effectively cleanse you. go. Yeah, let's go to these collapsed statues. This is always kind of a neat little outpost to me. Oh, man. I, I remember back in the day, uh, this was, when did they even introduce? So, this UI element here that lets you change your secondary profession was not part of the way the game came uh, came out. Originally, like, prophecies, like, lean into the idea that, oh, no, you you choose a secondary profession, you're stuck with that, um, lore-wise. And the only reason why you can change... Wow, that's weak. Uh, the only reason why you can change it is because of uh, ascending. Like, that's the idea, right? Um, so you can... Once you ascend... Uh, once you beat Augury Rock here, once this becomes a mission, you beat it. Then you can then you can uh, change your secondary profession. That that's the lore going on in prophecies, uh, and the way that they kind of mechanically did that was um, these NPCs here, like Zrotha Core, would give you quests. Um, looks like you did everything normal mode. I guess the last two hundred points are vanquishing and exploring then, probably. Um, like, she would teach you how to become a necromancer secondary, for example. Once you unlocked those through those quests, and, and Faction simplified it by just having you go to Senji and be like, here's 500 gold, and he's like, here's a secondary profession unlock. Uh, I think that's less interesting, but certainly more streamlined. Um, but anyway, for the longest time, you'd have to go back to one of these NPCs, such as Zrotha Kor, uh, and talk to them to be able to change your secondary. And it didn't matter which one you talked to. You could uh, talk to any of them, and they'd let you use any of the secondaries you unlock. So you didn't have to go to the Zrotha to become a Necromancer every time you wanted to get secondary and Necromancer. But, uh, yeah. The other thing that's kind of awkward, and I talked about this during the Prophecies slow playthrough, but normally you beat, you, you ascend, and then you're like, Dragon's Lair, let's continue pressing forward in Dragon's Lair. So I had to add a quest to be like, no, 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 go back and, uh, and talk to these ghosts. That now have quests for you. Uh, so that was a thing that they added in Drakner's Forge. Because I imagine a lot of players just pressed ahead without realizing that they could go back and, and get these. But I don't know. I, I love a lot of the design of Prophecies. And there's a lot of really cool stuff here that like works super well within the context of Prophecies. Yeah, this is a terrible shield. Why would I want this shield? Um, but that like kind of doesn't... Uh, hold like doesn't fit super well in the context of the the game at large. Yeah, that's a big deal going back and doing all those quests. I, I remember having to pop back to one of these NPCs whenever I want to change my secondary. It was real nice when they gave us the UI. Okay, so I need rubies more than sapphires at the moment. I do want to eventually get this guy... I want to get him his, the rest of his Lux and armor, and I do want to eventually get him Bobby and armor as well. I really wish Kryda had some more outposts in it. It really feels very wildernessy in the western half. Hey, Dead on Stick, good to see ya. Hello, Roxu. 
as well. I'm, I wanted to call you Roxby too, but I don't think that's... It's been a while, and it's been a while, Dead on Stick. I think you've been busy, right? That's at least why I remember you mentioning. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well as well, Rox. I've just seen you a little bit more recently. Maybe I should do that. That's good to hear. I have discovered that uh, Way of the Lotus is very useful for helping to manage energy when you have Beguiling Haze eating it up. You got your diploma Ooh, and started your first post-graduation job. Congratulations, Dead on Stick. Good to hear that. Settling into that pretty well then, I hope. I am going to make use of this antidote signet. That was a really good antidote signet. That's good to hear. Glad that's going well for you then. I found a worm, or rather a worm found me. This is the part where I'm glad I'm uh, an assassin, so I have high plus damage on my attacks to get through all of the ridiculous armor these things have. That's a pretty big accomplishment, so congratulations on that. Just taking Girudo Senso through uh, some of the other campaigns here. I need to go back to get the Maguma Jungle. I think I did the Wilds, and I was like, never mind this. I'm leaving. Ah. I'd like to stand somewhere where there isn't an eruption going on. That would be pretty nice. All right, there we go. Managed to get through that. Oh, by the way, Dead on Stick, um, you remember that uh, in the challenges program, hit the wrong thing there, um, the crash bug that you're running into, you're like, okay, how do, like, what do you do to fix this? Uh, when you didn't have the rarities file, I figured out a solution for it. Um, the program now checks to see are there any skills available in lower rarities if not are there any in higher rarities if not i guess this is a done pack then and just hands it over um so hopefully that's like cleared those up uh, i haven't like extensively edged case checked it or anything but the basic idea makes sense to me anyway so it, if nothing else, it successfully does not crash if you just go in there with no rarities file and are like, give me a pack. Which is like, sure, boss. And actually gives you one instead of uh, instead of being like, I don't know where to get all the skills from, dies. So. Uh, and I also finally got template drafts implemented. I don't know. You've probably been seeing some of the messages or some of the updates about it. I made extensive comment in the, in the Discord. But I know you've been a bit busy. So. Yeah, so it was, the, it was uh, ended up being, a, I think, a good way of trying to solve that particular problem. Because that, uh, that was something that didn't need to be addressed. <laughs> yeah. There's been a bit. I just want to get my dual attack and energy. There we go. Uh, right now, I'm just getting, I'm just taking you to the Senso through the other campaigns. Um, so, he did Nightfall and, um, Factions. So, I'm taking him through Prophecies, and I'm going to hit up Eye of the North as well. 
Then I'm probably going to take Rax through Nightfall, and I'm probably going to do Guild Wars Beyond, but there will probably be some other stuff sprinkled in there. I also want to start checking out Path of Exile. Um, I wanted to take a look at it potentially this week for, like, setting up some sort of streaming setup, but uh, then I spent all of my time working on, like, all of my free time and mental energy working on that and recording some videos, so um, that didn't happen. I did not take the time to check out Path of Exile. But soon. Soon. Let's see. I'm trying to remember my directions through the desert at the moment. Shock won't get affected by days because it's not a spell, it's a skill. Uh, just for clarity, because I was looking at the screen, um, Path of Exile is what you'd be really excited to see or something else. I just want to make sure I have context for your statement. Yeah, because Dunes of Despair is like over in here. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the thing. It's like everybody has been like, oh, that's a great idea. So that's that's really encouraging to me as like, ah, then that is a good idea to pursue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I looked at it extraordinarily briefly back when the download was like a fifth of the size it is now uh, many years ago. And... and it was like, okay, yeah, this is kind of a Diablo-like game, but never got really far at all in it. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I know talking to Fear and Nova Mara, they were saying, yeah, go into it blind and like make all the mistakes and learn how it works, and that'll be exciting. So that's probably what I'm going to do. That's my plan. Oh, man, I friggin' miss the Griffin farm so much so yeah I'll be curious to see how it works uh, and uh, to check it out especially with so many people being uh, interested in it and or being really fond of it in chat I was like ah there we go man back in the day what what'd you do back in the day and I've talked about this a bajillion times, but whatever, we'll, we'll talk about it again. Is there would be a bunch of griffins, like, right here in the map. And so you just leave out here and go collect all the griffins and, uh, and farm them. I think a bunch of people 55, you could also really easily do it with a, um, a warrior with, like, Cyclone Axe and Gladiator's Defense, which is what I did. And some of those monk on attack enchantments that heal you for hitting dudes. And, uh... Yeah, it was, it was just so much fun having all these griffins around you, just taking them down. And I really, really miss it, but they took that out a long time ago. Replaced it with Kafka Marrow Feasts. Because all the cool farms in this game had to go die. Another one that I really liked was the, uh, and I've talked about this one before too, but whatever is the uh, the farm that used to exist just outside Harvest Temple. Where you would, like, use the enemy's own famine to kill them with Ancestor's Visage. And, uh... Sympathetic Visage. Yeah, the famine farm. Yeah. Because, like, the enemies would use famine, which deals damage whenever you're... Whenever any creature in range is energy hit zero. And then you would go in like no armor or like starter armor. So you take a ton of damage and then use prop spirit with spirit bond uh, to make it so that way. You just didn't take any damage. It was just, it was, it was one of those things where it was just so clever as a farm, like so deeply clever. I have no idea if you could still do it as a, like a 55. I don't know why people didn't 55 it, actually. Yeah, I'd have to to look. I, I imagine there's some reason why it didn't work, but... Yeah, like, th they're ridiculous skills. They really are. 
198 gold. Okay, so that gets me most places. I still don't have um, Destiny's Gorge. You know what? Let's go. Let's go get Destiny's Gorge. For no particular reason other than I just don't feel like I've done the desert properly if I don't have all of those towns. I don't really need it on this guy for anything. Uh, and then let's just head back to the Maguma jungle and see about just doing the missions there. Acolyte Jin. Oh, Acolyte Jin hit level 20 as well. So that's good. I need to figure out what I'm doing with her more properly, but I need to get that guy some runes. I need to spend some time ruining some of these dudes up. Um... Did I get Raza? I might need to go back to Nightfall and grab Raza on this guy as well, now that I think about it. So I like having a Raza available as another ritualist. Not the most critical thing, but. I guess I could have antidote signated away that. Ah, eh, but incoming fallback. Overcomes the degen from bleeding pretty easily. Yeah, sometime probably more off stream. Unless people really want to watch me spending an entire stream like making builds. Uh, and making sure the AI uses them. I will probably want to like make more builds so that way I can do some interesting template drafting later because that is something I want to do maybe I should do more like blended streams a lot of my streams are like I'm just doing this one thing through the through most of it and maybe I should think of some ways of setting stuff up so I'm blending stuff a little bit more. That might not be the worst idea. I don't actually have condition removal on any of my characters, so this antidote signal is really important. Um, okay, I'm back far enough. It's one of those things of like, okay, it's a Simon Says game, and for some reason... Like, this is no problem for me, but when I watch, like, other people play games with their Simon Says, I have such a hard time, like, following along as a viewer. I have no idea what the difference is. Like, under underlying psychologically of, like, oh, why do I suck at this activity as a viewer but not as a player? Okay, sure, we'll get rid of some conditions here. I see you like your hamstrings. Lord Dorn Lendrigan. I really wish they had figured out giving NPCs interesting dialogue. Uh, oh, this is the guy that has the stance shields. Okay. I probably got a lot of bleach shells for this guy back in the day then. Um... Interesting. Uh, hey, Clean Star, good to see you. I wonder why your name's in blue now instead of yellow. I feel like you're usually in yellow. Eh, it doesn't matter. Um, this looks weirdly. Oh, it's just a weird positional thing. Interesting. Um, but yeah, it was with. Um, I think. It started in Sorrow's Furnace, that they started having interesting, like, text on the uh, NPCs. And then... Uh, that's a practice they obviously kept up through, through the rest of the games. I, I really like it when they have interesting additional text there, though. I think that was a good idea, though. I just wish they had started a little bit earlier. 
Could have given so much more character to some of these NPCs. That's such a beautiful area over that way. Yeah, that's Giant Stomp, all right. Maybe I should just head up to Eye of the North soon. I don't know. Not a bad idea to get myself a bit further in this one, though. Get some more skills in my categorization of available skills. Oh, I'm using Destruction over there. Destruction is nice in that it has a 20 second recharge, just like life does. I think Nick must be getting I see loadstones next. I still have no idea why they didn't make multiple tiers of that particular item. It's like they just have the same three gold one from pre searing all the way through. Hmm. Yeah, it was especially of the starting options I had available to me, the one I liked the best. I'm gonna be getting this guy Luxon because he joined the Luxons and it felt thematically appropriate. Uh for a different effects. He's probably going to be using the Satan quite a bit, though, just because it's his Radiant Armor. And I do like myself a Radiant Armor. Uh, and I kind of want to pick up Vobian as well at some point. But yeah, I, I feel like... You know, it's, it's interesting. Like, there's definitely different professions where it's like, ah, but I like these ones better. Or, um, like, a lot of the Fisher of Woe armor I do not like. Female warrior is the one that, like, exception to that. Uh, man, everybody's so runny today. I really need to. Maybe I need a slot in Caltrops. What am I doing for curses? Empathy. I was just noticing that I had a curse marker on him, so I was trying to think if uh, leaping one of the Mantis ones would be good. Isn't there another? Not Jungle Strike. Yeah, maybe I should bring Leaping Mantis Sting. Hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, I just happen to like a CERN a bit. I think I really, I just really like a CERN. Like, there's some where it's just like, eh, it's just not my favorite armor. And then there's some like, this one I think objectively looks bad. And the one that I'm, like, actually like is the... But again, everybody has different tastes. And I think that's one of the things that's really important. Um, and that I really like about Guild Wars is it does provide you a lot of options. I do wish Male Mesmer had a few more choices. Uh, I find that I'm not the biggest fan of... I think I need to go this way, actually. Uh, of most male Mesmer armors. I've been looking through because I wanted to get a secondary armor set for my male Mesmer, and I'm like, I don't really like most of these. Um, what is this? Okay, it looks like this just goes uphill. But yeah, if you're, I think you're... Uh, Salik? How do I pronounce that? Uh, looks pretty good. Fisher of Woe armor is also super expensive. Why? Okay, so this is something that I'm just realizing right now. It's like so many of the blind effects are super pulsy. Dust Trap and Eruption are so all over the place here. Hey, Salak. Now so it's written. Cool, cool. I want to try to make sure I pronounce things correctly. So one of the problems is my uh, frame of reference for pronouncing things that is English really doesn't have very uh, definable vowel sounds. They tend to be extremely fluid and flexible and make it a little bit tricky to know how to pronounce things. And of course, different languages have different rules about different things. Like a lot of uh, Americans or English speakers. Yeah. 
uh, are going to have a real hard time with Italian. My sister is an Italian major, so I've learned some about it. Um, because of the way CI and stuff works. Because CH makes it a hard C, where CI is the ch sound. So, like, chow is a good example of that. So it's like, oh, this is one of those things where it's like, ah. This works ex like basically the opposite of the way it does in English. <laughs> Not exactly, because in English, CI would be an S type sound, because. I guess why not? Uh, C is one of those weird letters. Like, English feels really inefficient as language letter wise because it's like, but why does C make any sound other than the CH sound? Because we can use K for hard and, or, yeah, K for hard C and S for soft C. So there's no reason to have C be anything other than the ch sound in like chew. For some reason, that's the word that came into my mind. <laughs> um,. Don't know why. Hey, Hydra. Uh, and then, why does G, why is there a soft G? Why can't G just always be hard? Because we have J that G can become when it's soft. And then Q is completely pointless letter. Except for like looking fancy. There we go. Destiny's Gorge. Now I feel now my desert's complete. Also, I really like the fact that this character got to Destiny's Gorge through the south instead of the north, which is the way I usually go, because I went a really weird way to Thirsty River. Vietnamese has words that are written exactly the same, but pronunciation gives them completely different meanings. Oh boy. You said Vietnamese then? That's cool. We do have that sort of uh, effect in English as well, though. Um, okay, I needs to do the wilds. Lead versus lead, uh, metal versus uh, leading things, as an example of that. Both spelled L E A D. Ooh, griffin wings are a good source of feather, apparently. Ah, uh, that makes sense. There are other examples, but... What are some? Hmm. Where's the merchant to? German, English, Korean, French, in that order. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, my number one superpower would be teleportation, because why wouldn't it be? But I think it'd be real cool to be a polyglot and able to speak all languages. I think that would be exceptionally awesome. Or an omniglot, rather. Polyglot is speaking multiple languages. Yeah, the, it, America could really use a more robust, like, foreign language mentality. Um, then it has. That's something that I think is... Uh, other parts of the world are better about, because we can get away with being weak in it. I think I'm just going to go Shadow Theft here. I don't think I need the other, other piece of business. I still want my Antidote Signet. Actually, actually, actually. Before I wander off in there, do I have... can't touch this. Uh, no, it would be 
before. Fall back. Oh well. If I had can't touch this, I'd bring it on General Morgan's. That way I could stop all of the touch range skills that are going to be coming my way. But that is not the case. I was doing this recently. Yeah, 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 for all of the Master's Rewards. Well, the good news is my team's real good at getting rid of um, axes. Yeah. I mean, it's all you need, but I still think... Like, other languages bring with them other ways of, like, processing stuff, right? Because the way that they... Because language is fundamentally, um, at least the way that I interact with it, is fundamentally connecting ideas to, like, words. So it's like, here's some core idea and here's a word to express it. And sort of the way grammatical syntax works and the way ideas are, like, described. Sometimes you have slightly different ideas described by... Described better. Like, one of the things with English is we have... Um, a couple like big areas of lack in terms of um, distinction. Uh, yeah, I mean English has become kind of a global language. It's become the lingua franca, as they say. Um, yeah, that's for sure. Um, I'm not gonna worry about the bonus here. I just want to get through. Uh, but anyway. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Having only one word for you instead of having both a plural and a singular is real annoying. Uh, mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely different, like, constructs can cause confusion as well. Like, uh, I know some languages, the pronouns, like, words have a gender, and so pronouns take the gender of the word they're attached to instead of the gender of the thing to which they refer back. Um, their antecedent. Um, bring to urban American versus upper class American. Uh, Will comes from a place where bad means good. Doesn't that say it all? Yeah. Side effect of slaying stuff as well. Um. I just want to get over there and fight this thing. Yeah. That absolutely is a thing that happens. Uh. But, like, another... Another one that's a, a big one is the word love. Just means so many different things in English. And like we have other words uh, or adjectives that we can use. But like people don't go around qualifying stuff as often as they need to, to kind of like be specific. Yeah. Well, and that's where like if you look at British English versus American English, you get all sorts of differences. Never mind spelling. Uh, for example, the whole... How many U's does the language employ? Like, favorite. Does it have a U in it or not? Well, it depends upon American English versus British English. But things like trunk versus boot, lift versus elevator. I don't think I kept those in a consistent ordering. And, like, lots of other... Just, like, subtle slings. But that's one of the things that's really... Um, Mm. Yeah, and that's like, does it carry an inherent sarcasm to it, right? Because um, fat chance is inherently sarcastic in the way people employ it, at least here. Because uh, theoretically, a fat chance would mean that you are very likely, right? The chance is large. But it's always used in a sarcastic way, so fat chance and slim chance mean the same thing. Um and that's like a connotative add-on. Uh, 
that that's one of the things that's really cool about this day and age is we get to interact with so many different cultures through the internet uh, and just like how they employ stuff and, and learn about them. And I think that's really, really cool. Where is this protector? Don't need the, these prop spirits going on. I mean, if it's just setting me on fire, that's not a big deal. So it starts blinding me that I have problems with traps going off. I've never been big into tea. I, know, I mostly just drink water. Not relevant to anything in particular, but you just said time for tea, so. Making me think of it. And now I'm thinking about economics. Because I, there is a thing I saw on Twitter where somebody is saying, um, like, what's something that you associate with the British but, ab but actually isn't? And somebody responded, tea. Because, of course, tea came from China, is my understanding. Uh, which is what the Opium Wars were about, was that the British were so busy importing stuff from China that they were running out of silver to send as currency. Like, they were running into actual currency shortages. Because, of course, that was at a time when money was made out of physical objects like silver. Um, I think this is a dead end. I think I need to go around this way. I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, but anyway, so then you have the Opium Wars because... Britain was like, we need an export to China so we can get our silver back. And uh, they discovered opium was a really effective one. The Chinese government, apparently, from what I recall from the, the extra history videos on it, was like, we would prefer not to have all our people high on opium, please. And then a war happened. And it was bad. And it's long-term consequences. Sure. Yeah. I can understand defensive wars and, um, but obviously that requires somebody else to be the aggressor. Uh, and I can understand. Um, okay, they're showing me which way to go there with the Shining Blade. Um, I can also understand, uh, like, rebellions that are trying to throw off a tyrannical government. But just, like, wars to conquer other areas just seem like such a waste. But on the other hand, we are living in an era where resources are a lot more prevalent. That probably affects some of my perception. But it just seems like if everybody could just get along instead of having to, like, try to compete, everything would be a lot better. But, of course, that requires a willingness to share, and that becomes more difficult the scarcer resources are. Which... I mean, like, nowadays... Though, like, most currencies are fiat currencies anyway. They they don't have some sort of physical backing. So that kind of affects some of that sort of stuff. <sighs> I am... Loki looking forward to January 20th, 21st, 20th, somewhere in there.
Anyway, Gretch Trundle. I wonder what the process for naming all of these bosses was. They got some really bizarre names going on. The good news is, these things are being lower level than me, I think it gives me a higher crit rate. Or just helping with my energy management. Assassins don't have any anti-knockdown skills. I mean, IAU is just kind of the global anti-knockdown skill, so I'll... I'm just thinking about Dragon Slayer, um, because Dragon Slayer has the force knockdown partway through... Or towards the end, I should say. Do I have Landry's Resilience already? Probably not. No, I do not. I want to make sure I'm capturing that when I get to the point of doing Dragon's Lair. It's interesting. Maguma's spiders dropping down from the ceiling and Devourer's unburrowing are basically the same mechanic. They're just different animations on executing on it. They feel, do feel slightly different to me for some reason. No, group plug a lug. Come back here. I need to stab you with my pointy bits. There we go. Uh, well, I guess that poison's almost gone anyway. Yeah, I should do a template. Okay, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to... What is it? Like, almost an hour into the stream, maybe? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, play this guy for a while, then I'm probably going to just switch to a different character and uh, do, like, template draft something. I don't know what exactly is going to be. Like, I don't necessarily want to start it in hard mode for obvious reasons. Um, why is this spider allied to me? Uh, just because I think it would be interesting and fun to do, so... I might pick a character that needs some... Book filling in. Uh, let's see about doing that, because I think that would be fun. Okay, Bloodstone Fen. Do I need to clear out my inventory? Eh, not that much. So let's just jump right in. I'm not going to do the bonus here, so we'll actually get to see Blades got Rider for a change, which will be nice. I haven't seen that fellow in a while. Those things are so annoying. With the whirlwind knocking me over. Wait, wrong skill. All right, those are taken care of. Uh, let's continue on then. Oh, there's the Chosen being led to the jungle. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the backside. Okay, yeah, now I'm looking at the geography here. That's the backside. You can go explore that area if you go past the Bloodstone. Ah, I need to spend a bunch of time. You know what? Maybe. Maybe I could do... Nah, I should just do it on some character that needs a book. What I'm thinking is I want to take uh, my one Dervish in normal mode and the Prophecy's missions for cartography. Um... Well, that's probably not the most satisfying way to do 
it so I really wish more prophecies was made for level 20 content again like I think prophecies pacing and I've said this a bajillion times but I think prophecies pacing works really well in the context of prophecies uh, but in the context of I, I really do like the overlooks that you get on that um, but in the context of like the rest of the campaigns it's not great because they really needed to set up more of it to be level 20 et cetera et cetera I've talked about that before extensively whirlwind and aftershock is a good combo actually Probably jump around characters a little bit. Actually, I think maybe Mirian needs a bunch of stuff. Finding builds that'll work on her might be a little tricky, though. She's a little bit short on skills. Relatively speaking. I could probably find some stuff, though. And probably buy skills that I'd be missing otherwise. Because that's the tricky thing about doing a template draft is like your character needs to be able to, you need to be able to have bars for your character as well in there. Which maybe isn't the easiest at all times. Of course, I could also theoretically just like. Swap characters. I don't know. That's an interesting idea as well, actually. I hadn't thought about doing something like that until just now. But I could do... Um, Multi-part. Hmm. So, like, this is an interesting idea. What, what do you all think of this? Template draft, um, of course, has me picking templates, right? Like... That's how that's how it works. So like, uh, for example, this this bit here. Let me slide this up a bit uh, and maybe actually fight things in game. So this this has me like, okay, I've got these templates. I've got this poison fang ranger assassin. I've got this uh, this warrior bar. This other warrior bar. And this other warrior bar, and then a couple of monk bars. Uh, and then a dervish bar. So it's like, oh, I could do template drafts where I'm swapping around what character I'm playing as as I go through each mission. Like, let's say I was doing, uh, I feel like Factions and Nightfall are the best ones for this because Prophecy is, is really awkward. Um, or Eye of the North would work well to it for it as well. But where I'm swapping around which character I'm playing as in accordance like with what things I actually have available. So it'd be like less continuous because it wouldn't all be on the same character. What do you all think of that sort of idea? Some random thing I'm thinking about. This is more of a future thing to do than a, like, here and now thing. Actually, wouldn't be... Yeah. Okay. And then we could have... Because you get to save two of the templates between rounds. Yeah, you come back up this way. I think it's kind of neat. And it would get me playing different things too. That's something that I might do for a future stream here. Let's see. Like, general things I know I want to do. I know I want to do a Young Heroes of Tyria run on um, Disciple, my uh, my Dervish, in order to get a book for faction for um, finishing Lightbringer. 
Uh, I know I need to do additional bits of cartography on him as well. I think I like the idea of... Doing a bit more variety in terms of what I'm doing each day. Hmm. And I also want to, like, introduce Path of Exile. I'm thinking business stuff out loud, but... Uh, trying to think through, like... What's interesting sort of stuff to see and what's interesting for me to do and all that sort of thing. What? Damn it, did it shatter off me? Oh, did it? Now I might just be confused. Well, that's good to hear. You know what I've been wanting to do, too? I've been wanting to do another TOPK run. Because, like, I'd like to do more stuff to finish things, um, in terms of, like, things that you actually play to do. Not, like, Drunk or Title or whatever, <laughs> which is not a thing that you play. Um, on Disciple, I like, I'd like to just get him further. Um, in, like, his... I don't know, I guess God Walking Amongst Mere Mortals. Kind of a big deal title track stuff. Uh, okay, I'm just going to grab a seed now, then. I haven't done this particular path in quite a while. The bonus is down this direction. Takes you back in there, but I don't feel like doing it. This is annoying. Um, Cause you have to like manage a bunch of like not attacking and stuff. So, um, so I want to do some of that stuff. I want to get. Rex Templaris and Gerudo Senso through the content that I haven't done yet. And Arden's as well, actually, for that matter. Um, and then I also want to... Uh, need, I need to go back here for another... I'm too far. The Vine Seas are over here, self. Um, and then I would like to also try out temp actually doing template drafting, because that seems like a lot of fun. This is one of the things that happens is when you go back, these dudes pop up. Oh, I'll go back for a different one. Just wait for this one to finish processing. There we go. What exact? You need this for over here. That's where it goes. I don't forget where this goes. I just... Didn't remember how the map lined up. That's all. I like some of these loops and stuff that they have you do with these vine seeds. I think it makes kind of a neat arrangement. But yeah, it's been a while since I've done TOPK, so I like doing it every now and then. You can get Ecto in there too, which is kind of neat. Still remember getting that Ecto drop off of that Priest of Joko during the Halloween event. That was unexpected, but kind of cool. That moment when you accidentally hit skill two because you have two shadow steps and one of them jumps you and the other doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get to wins of change, but that might be like, there's a day where I do like Actually, Warren Cry will probably be first, realistically. But they'll probably be as like, here's a day where I do this. Here's, um, the day where I do other random stuff in the game. And, uh, then here's a day where I do Path of Exile. I don't know. We'll, we'll see again. There's just so many, like, the future is, is unwritten. Uh, 
I haven't talked to this guy in a while. He says, look, I'm supposed to take you to the Bloodstone, but the mantle wiped out my entire party, and I'm not going back. Uh, go on if you want to, but you should know the stone disrupts divine energy. Those killed on top of it take much longer to resurrect. That's interesting. I'd like to know a little bit more about Bloodstones. I mean, realistically, I'd love to know more about, like, what's going on with some of the story in Guild Wars 2 as well. But I'm just kind of waiting for wooden potatoes to get there. Uh, and then, like, you come forward, a little bit further forward, and here is his scout troop. I love that detail, right? Like, these Shining Blade warriors are dead. You know something that would actually be really good to explore more? Because a lot of these RPGs have resurrection mechanics for obvious reasons, right? But it's like... Oh, what does this practically mean for warfare? I think that would be really interesting to explore. And I feel like it just kind of gets hand waved. Like. Oh, I have. Okay. Sure. I've done the shadow step thing. Um. But you know what, I, what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. That's just a really interesting topic to explore. Like, okay, well, what if you kept encountering, like, the same rival on the battlefield? Actually, you know what? I'm just realizing. A game has touched on this. Um, the M Middle Earth Shadow of... I know they did it in Shadow of War. Did they do it in Shadow of Mordor as well? But sometimes you have a guy that's just like, oh, yeah, and this guy just keeps popping back up. He just... He, he does the resurrection thing thing too. That game actually kind of like addresses it inside the context of the world in a really interesting way. I really like those games. Those are, those are a lot of fun. I don't know that they would do well streaming in terms of viewership. If you're worth doing or not, but this one is, this one can get a little excessive. I'm going to run this seed up. Here, and then I'm going to grab a second one. Yeah, yeah, here's the moss scarabs. This one's all sparkly, so it makes me think it has a seed. I need both seeds. I'm going to need one for a thing, so I just figured I'd trigger the moss scarabs now. Oh, hmm. I might. Yeah. Okay, I think I might. Um, I think I might go add a Discord channel for submitting templates for template drafting. Yeah, let's do this right now. Text channel, new, um, template, draft, submissions, great channel. Okay, I will add details to that later, but that sounds like a fun thing to do, potentially. It's like, viewer submitted templates. Make sure that they are not using PvE-only skills so that they can be put on heroes. I'll, I'll, I'll fill it out. But I added this, you know what? There, link my Discord. Seems like a proper time to do it when I'm like adding channels to it for these purposes. That seems like it could be fun. Yeah, you all deal with those. I'm gonna go drop off this. I don't know. Maybe something happened to that, maybe not, but I like the idea anyway. I'm back here. Maybe I just need my deadly arts. Snaring ones. Do I? Hmm. I need to go get Shadow Prison. I think that's a nightfall skill. I I should just take this guy skill capping is what needs to happen. Eh. Let me do proxies for now. 
I'm filling in a... Like, I don't need to do this for, like, actual progress of the game. I'm just filling in stuff here. Nile the Compassion. It. Oh, Compassion doesn't fit there because he has conditions and stuff on him. So it just truncates it. I find that interesting, though, that they just truncate instead of having any sort of, like, indication. You know what? I'm suddenly wondering. They could have had a Shadow Step that's, like... Gives you like a second of 100% block when you use it. I mean, I would have made it 100% evade, but evade went away. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. I went in there with it <laughs> the other day, and I was like, whoa. Whoa. Just go in there with some interrupts and drop Pain Inverter on the Great Destroyer and then just watch him explode himself. It was spectacular. Or, oh, that was the, uh, yeah, yeah. Come down this way, everyone. Come down this way, everyone. You can do it. Yeah. He just blows himself up. It's, uh, pretty spectacular. Okay, now everybody's figured out how directions work. So yeah, you can just ignore these groups and uh, run around back there to get some cartography. I need to do, to do that on uh, one of my characters. Okay, well, never mind you, Scout. Just... Get splash damaged, apparently. It's probably on always level 20. Probably. This ends when you kill Hableon, so you just ignore him and just run on back and to the back, and it's all good. Um, I kind of need to do this. So I need to get down to Aurora Glade. Do Aurora Glade. So yeah, I guess let's just do primary quest. I need to clear out my inventory. That won't take long. Just salvage a few things. Radiant and attunement. I'll have to see what those are worth. This is like, yeah, those are off not worth as much as you'd want them to be. Unfortunately. Ooh, highly salvageable. Four steel ingots. Now that's what I call some highly salvageable. I also got a lot of these necromancer weapons, probably because of how many necromancer enemies there were to fight. Uh, these also often salvage into iron. So if I salvage that, I got an iron ingot from it, which is frankly probably worth more than it is worth without doing that. Um... I don't have anything I'm looking for, do you? It doesn't look like it. Drider's defenses isn't Drider's defenses isn't terrible. Uh, it th like this is one of the more defensive like oh crap buttons because plus like a bajillion armor against elemental damage makes you super durable. So if you're really taking a hit. Although, like, faint neutrality is arguably a bit better. Um, ancient eyes are going to be worth some dust. These are going to be some plant fibers. Chitin fragments are just chitin fragments. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this chitin. Uh, I'll just hang on to that for now and probably merchant this off. Yeah, that was improved sale value. 
Major fast casting. Probably not worth anything. These don't hurt to check, though. Idol's probably not worth anything. No, not really. It's you just, A lot of these things are just not worth very much, so I'm just going to sell that stuff. Hang on to the runes for later. I like to hang on to runes for later, just to make sure they're actually, you know, not worth something. Um, I want to do a fun elite. Yeah, okay, enough enough shadow arts. Let's go into some deadly arts. Get out of here, shadow arts. Assassin's Promise. Definitely a heck of a thing. Uh, I just don't want Dark Prison because I'm tired of everything running from me. <laughs> this is really what this comes down to. How about Impale? Impale seems like a good way to finish things off. Okay, yeah, let's um let's just do a different different thing entirely. Let's do Assassin's Promise. Um Black Mantis Rust. Jungle Strike, which deals a boatload of damage. Critical Strike and Impale. You have Dark Prison to Shadow Step to enemies. And, uh... And follow up with Militia Strike. There we go. I don't know. Doing something different. I feel like being fancy. We're going to be fancy. And we're going to drink some water. I'm thinking about this. Uh, nope. Actually, this is, looks really wonky this way. Uh, yep. Okay, that's what I thought. EOTN skill. I, I want poison tip signet, so I'm like, okay, where is it, though? I don't know how I feel about volley being a thing that exists. Body shot's good, though. I don't often use other sorting methods but attribute, but... I don't know... I don't know why both attribute sort and profession sort exist. Because, like... This just feels like a worse version of attribute sort. I understand, like, type sort which can actually be very useful here on Assassin because it can separate out your lead attacks and your dual attacks and your offhands, which can be real handy. Uh, but, I don't know, there's some weird sorting options is what I'm saying. Yeah, this is the plan. Oh, everything's messed up now. Okay, everything's better. I feel like I remember people doing this in PvP. I certainly remember the um, the snare when you uh, go forward. Daggers are fun on. Ow! But you know what? Whatever. There we go. Daggers are fun on uh, Assassin Secondary. Yeah, I understand that one perfectly. 
Because especially if you're doing a bunch of hard mode content, you can really get into a bit of a rut. Because it's like, oh, well, here's the builds that work effectively in hard mode. I guess I'm just going to keep doing those. Is a protector. This is actually a pretty solid chain. I don't know how it stack up in harder areas, but. Mm-hmm. Daggers are just effective weapons because of how much armor ignoring damage they deal. You definitely need to build a little bit differently for energy management, depending upon what your primary is, but... Assassin's Promise is good times. This actually deals a lot of damage. Plus 25 and then 31 AoE, on, including on your target. That's no joke. Yeah, there's the, the blunt ones. Um, yeah, knowing, like, okay, why should I care about what type they deal? I, I do think, like, in general... Guild Wars 1 is maybe, like, it has a bunch of dam damage types, but it's a little bit opaque about when you use what one over another. For those who don't know, you can get some blunt daggers from the Winds of Change content. The daggers of purity, I think. They're basically du dual-wielding GTA. Uh, it means always GTA. Uh, they're dual-wielding GTA, and um, they work a certain way. I see you over there doing your eyeway nonsense. I think you're getting away with it. Um, but it's like, okay, what enemies are weaker to blunt and what which enemies are weaker to slashing and which are weaker to piercing? Like, it's just not a thing that really matters most of the time, so... I feel like I spend more of my time casting Assassin's Promise than anything else. Assassin's Promise is a fun skill for PvE. But it's like, you can get daggers of each damage type. Uh, most of these are going to be... I mean, these are cold, because I made them cold. But these are slashing, these are slashing. I don't know. These are probably piercing? Yeah, these are piercing. Uh... Probably want a different prefix on those than silencing, but here we are. Just because silencing is a bunch of expensive skills, so having minus five maximum energy is not conducive to using them. Dunkoro? Why would you cast Empathy on Dunkoro? I am very confused. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of different skins that are going to be piercing. Just the one that I'm aware of that's blunt. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, like... A lot of enemies are just going to be equal on those armor types, so it just doesn't really matter that much. Um, there are sometimes differences... Frankly, it's one of those things where, like, most of the differences are not even super present. Because, like, so, like, players can affect, like, which armors they're more, or, like, which damage types they're more effective against. Um, assassins, for example, have a bunch of armors 
that can make them more effective against various damage types. Um, like plus 15 armor against piercing, for example. But I don't think anybody like ever uses those. So this is the problem that I have with the Insignia system, is the Insignia system, it's really cool, but it also meant that by disconnecting what we now call insignias from armor skins. You just kind of have a few, like these are the good ones instead of people like having their fashion or their mechanics drive the other, right? Cause that, that's what the effect that you get otherwise is your fashion drives, uh, which way you go. Um, like what insignia you'd have and things like that. So like pyromancer's armor would be armor against pyromancy. Um, What do you got going on, Deep Root? Predatory Season. I don't really care about that. Mm-hmm. But you can also get, like, shields that are plus against certain... Uh, against damage types, right? Um, as a generic anti-melee on caster shields. Yeah. So, and, like, um, plus against earth is used against Vitair farming because they deal earth damage for some reason. Uh, so plus an armor against them helps reduce damage. But it's like... I mean, I'm going to go pop in my guild hall talk about this because now it's on my mind and like I want to talk about design things so here we are this is this is who I am um so if we go look at the rune trader it's going to pop up for assassin and you can see that there are four assassin assassin insignias there is plus 10 armor versus physical and additional plus 10 versus blunt and then they have that for piercing and slashing this does not help you against um like elemental damage at all and then there's night stalkers which is just armor plus 15 while attacking it doesn't do as well against specific things as these do but it is additional armor while attacking which works in more cases so people tend to favor night stalkers over others um these have come way down these used to be used to be kind of expensive um but it's like because of insignias it's like oh survivors became a thing radiant was kind of like a default one but it's like gladiators armor was radiant for example so some armor sets were radiant druids was radiant um there's another example and then, like, and I'm not quite sure what, what things existed and what didn't on term, in terms of generic. I know Radiant existed. Um, I'm not sure about these others. It's just been too long. Blessed is, of course, really popular. But now, like, you need to get Insignia for your armor before your armor would come with them. I still wish armors came with default Insignias built into them, even if they didn't, um, like, even if you couldn't salvage the defaults out, you just had to overwrite them if you wanted something different. I still wish they came with defaults. Uh, but that'd make prodigies super cheaper. Um, this guy has the shamans and soup domination. I'm going to use that superior domination magic one, by the way. But like prodigies is super valuable because whatever. Um, so it used to be you'd get an armor set and it would have this effect on it. A different armor set would have this effect on it. A different armor set would have this effect. Uh, so a good example here is necromancer. There's, um... Bloodstained Insignia used to just be on boots. It was just Bloodstained Boots would have this effect on it. So there's specific boots that had this effect. Um, there was Tormentor's Insignia. Uh, there's armor that you could get that had this effect built into it, right? And so you just get that armor and be like, this is how I look, and I get this effect. Uh, Bone Lace was another one, though. Some Necromancers could just have plus 15 armor against piercing damage. So it's like, maybe piercing is a little bit worse in that case. Uh, and, of course, these other effects as well. Um, Undertakers, Blighters, Minion Masters. And and I miss that aspect of the game um, because I feel like it was really interesting. And it created some variety in how things worked. And like Wanderers giving you plus armor versus element as a monk, for example. Uh, and again, like versus specific elements as... Um, and there's Earthbound. Uh, against specific elements as a ranger. Um, supporting your... Like, more with the pet, more with the preparation. These are all really cool, and I like the variety of things. Uh, I like Lieutenants as minus 20 armor, because the only place to get Lieutenants... Uh, you could get a Lieutenant helmet in, like, Henge of Din Ravi. Uh, and so that made it, like, a special thing. So I think the Insignia system is good in terms of opening up a variety of what people can do. I think I would... Like, I think it's bad in the sense of, like, it makes armor different armor skins less individually special when they're all just like 
armor skin and the uh, mechanical effect of the armor are disconnected. And like, I and again, this is why I say I wish armor still came with a built-in insignia that you could overwrite if you wanted to, but came with an insignia by default because I think that would be interesting. Um, that would like capture what was cool in the original implementation. Uh, you know? Uh, okay, well. We're gonna take the entombment out of this. That's for sure. 29 gold. Radiant's probably worth taking out. Uh, knights and major fast casting. I don't think knights is worth anything. And major fast casting might be. Yep, major fast casting is worth something. So we'll pull that out as well. Oh, knights is a knight's armor, not knight's insignia. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Do I want to sell this? I might not. Norgu. How you set it, my friend? You have major domination. Ah, and major inspiration. Okay. Well, I can grab Daedalon. And give Daedalon these major fast castings. Might do stuff with them later, but not right now. Okay. Um. But yeah, so it's just one of those things where it's like there's a bunch of different things that these do, and I kind of wish they leaned into some of that um, effect still, and I kind of miss it from back in the day. It's like, oh yeah, and this would be bone lace armor because it has that effect in it and stuff. Um, this cane is kind of weird. It gives you plus 10 health by default and then additional plus 10 health if you're hexed and an additional plus 10 health if you're enchanted. I love these weird, crazy weapons. It's not worth using because this is not a good effect, but it's cool and weird, and I like it, and I'm going to merchant it off because I don't need it. I miss the sort of, like, design that Prophecies has, though, where it's just less formalized. Made more interesting stuff. Again, and we've talked about this before too, but I'd really like it if green weapons had done that. If um, if unique weapons had done weird, strange effects uh, on them. Okay, Ventari. Uh, cool. That was that all I needed to do. Yep, looks like it. I don't know why we get this now. Also, I need to turn this in. Sure, let's go turn this in while I'm noticing it. Uh, you know what? No, we'll turn that in later when I go do. Augury Rock, or go back to the desert to do missions there. That's what we'll do. That's what makes sense. And yeah, definitely, like, when you can create perfect weapons at the press of a couple of buttons... Uh, in PvP, on a PvP-only character, it makes sense to use some of the more specialized functions. Like armor against specific things like that. Why isn't there a dual attack with shortened activation time? It feels like a thing that should exist. Maybe Ninetale Strike should have had it. I don't know. Good old Iway. Okay, Counselor of Valor, I did the thing that you wanted me to do where I fought off the White Mantle that are attacking you. And then this is when we should get Urgent Warning. I, there's some quest issues in this game where they just give you stuff in weird orders. Uh, let's see, this Chakram has a halves casting time of spells, chance 5%, and armor plus 5 versus elemental damage. It is a weak. Worth 91 gold, though. Like, these weapons, identifying them, really boost their value quite a lot, generally, uh, and makes them a lot more, like, valuable that way. 
Ah, Prophecies had so many ideas that just didn't... Like, they changed them over the future games, and I don't mind that. But, you know, maybe... Maybe we should have been able to exchange these Lux and Totems for, like, Lux and Weapons or something. Wouldn't that have been cool if, like, there's a way to, like, farm Lux and Totems, too, and you could, like, exchange them for special Lux and themed weapons? Something like that would have been sweet. I wonder how much damage I did to the protector. <laughs> Well, this uh, area sucked. Hey, Nico Garcia. Yeah, something like that would have been cool. Uh, although, like, or maybe by stopping, like, a repeatable quest that gives you them for, for or for participating in the freaking fight against the Kurzix, or I don't know. Why am I all the way down here anyway? This is run off the rails. Hope you're doing well. I just, I don't know. There's systems that could have been cooler. And um, I want to, like, remake these games. T just, like, bluntly. <laughs> that, that's where I'm at. I want to remake Guild Wars 1 in its entirety. Um, with, like, refreshed ideas. And, and that's just too much work. But... I still would absolutely love to recast it in my my vision for how I'd want things to play. Eh. At some point, I'm going to just be setting up a system and unity for something vaguely related. To inchoate to discuss in any sort of detail. I've got all these RPG Maker projects that I want to finish before I worry about anything else game development wise. Non Max Cleaver. Mm hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Ten second cooldown, five energy. Just like a skill that you use it and it pings all pop ups on the map. Kind of like Light of Deldramore, except for pop ups. Or, or would you like uh, the skill that you'd really like in Ego? Is uh, like fumigate, destroy all enemies that are hidden within like earshot or something. I don't know. I don't know what range it'd have to be. Probably not earshot. It'd probably have to be a little bit longer. But okay, good. Got that guy done. I just realized like we needed to kill him fast enough that assassins promised him we're off. Because, boss. Poor concrete. <laughs> uh, golden Kappa. Interesting. Uh, not going to lie, when I first saw that uh, that gold Kappa emote, it looked kind of like a Donald Trump Kappa. Just uh, that initial initial glance without fully realizing what it was. Like what? It's very confused. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, Biden did win. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like. Biden is projected to win. Projected to win. Yeah, it would be a weird political statement. Uh, um, so, like, t like, 
he's one, but he's not like officially one. Like it has the like everybody knows he's going to win, but it doesn't have the, like the official certificate of doneness on it because they need to like certify all of the. Th I don't know. It's weird. It takes a while to like fully certify, but we know that he's going to win. But we don't know like what's going on in the interim. Like what's going to happen with Slam Duck season? Are we going to get another stimulus bill passed? That would be nice. But um, you know. Our federal government is inept at doing anything. Ugh. So many frustrations with how completely inept our our government has become. You know what? I'm better off just like militia striking these things or something. But I certainly hope it is uh, relatively boring. Yeah, but at least some governments have a unified message on how to handle a global pandemic and um, are supporting citizens during lockdown. The U.S. is particularly, like... I can't say that. The U.S., from my perspective, is, is notably... Uh, challenged. Okay, take care of here. See you when you get back. Um But yeah, the US government has been like terrible at, at doing things. Well, part of what hap what's happened is our leg legislative branch is the one that's supposed to be doing stuff and um it's been completely dysfunctional for a while now. Uh And there's, I think, a variety of reasons for it. Uh, but what that's basically meant is that then everybody cares about the judicial branch because the legislative branch is failing to legislate, so everybody's trying to find a way around that. So, that, like, are trying to get legislative power in... Because legislation needs to happen regardless, right? Regardless of whether or not the legislative branch is actually doing it. People need legislation to happen. So then they try to, like, sue to get legislation to happen by doing stuff through the courts... Uh, which is why the Supreme Court's become so important, um, or at least part of the reason. Uh, and then the um, the executive branch is also like executive orders have gone crazy, just because it's uh, I, that's something President Obama did a lot was executive orders uh, because couldn't get anything through the legislation. Uh, but those are, like, limited in the scope of what they can do, and they're very easy for the next president to overturn as well if they don't like them, uh, as happened, like, say, DACA, uh, which was for children born in the U.S. or something. I don't I don't entirely know exactly what the policy was, but it's basically about children of, like, illegal, immi or illegal immigrants, undocumented migrants, whatever you want to say, people who did not immigrate through the, uh, the proper means or have overstayed visas or whatever um i know there's a lot of political charge in some of those terms which is also a problem because it makes it hard to discuss the topics but yeah basically brought in young of like allowing them because they basically only really known the u.s let them just be citizens and uh which i think is a good policy how can i help thank you elder gretchen um oh this is a very ordinary axe huh um, but it's like, that stuff is really easy to overturn when it's done that way, because then the president can just, or a new president can just executive order away the old executive orders, right? It's, uh, so it's like, we need a legislative branch to actually do legislation, but it's locked up for a couple of reasons. Um, from what I've been seeing by, um, a former congressman, uh, Justin Amish, 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 uh, whatever, his name exactly, A-M-A-S-H, um, he... Uh, Andrew Yang did an interview of him on Yang Speaks, and also I've, I've been following him on Twitter now and uh, seeing what he tweets. And it's like the leadership of the parties has just completely gone, gotten way too powerful um, and gained too much control over the legislative process. 
And then uh, gerrymandering, political gerrymandering, has been a huge issue. That basically allows the parties to make guaranteed things, and then that pushes more extreme because you don't have to appeal to the middle. And There's all sorts of things that I think would help, but it's a matter of getting them to actually happen. Let's see. This wicked staff is energy plus 5 while hexed and damage plus 10% versus hexed foes. That's bizarre. And then a very ordinary non-max axe. This axe is really interesting to me because it's it's a plus 5 energy fortitude thing. I'm going to hang on to this axe, I think, for the time being. Again, just in case I want that fortitude mod and I need to look through. Yeah, Prophecy's reward stuff is all sorts of all over the place. I, I Frankly, I love it. I love how all over the place it is. It's just none of it's none of the all over the place stuff is max, so it's not actually worth using, but it's very interesting. Whereas this is just like an ordinary non-max axe. Yeah, right? I wish... Unique items had done some of that sort of wonky stuff. Yeah, the weaponsmiths have some interesting stuff. Um, there's an axe in Lion's Arch that just is like almost max, but then just has like plus two damage against the undead or something. I was actually looking at the um, the Ogre Slayer knife the other day because I was looking at what the darknesses drop, and the comments were about like how this is the only weapon with, like, a raw just added damage, not, like, plus 20% or something. It's like, no, 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 there's actually an axe you can craft. But, like, the only one against a creature type. It's like, no, no, there's an axe that does that against the undead. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then there's all sorts of wonky stuff from collectors, especially in Ascalon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a pretty substantial... Gold saving. Uh, do I want to do anything different with my team comp going into this? I don't really feel like I need to. Maybe Acolyte Jin wants to be a little bit different? I could see an argument for that. Okay, let's go let's go to my guild hall. Uh and add Margaret. See what Margaret is how Margaret is set up. Uh, rune insignia wise. Okay, she's major expertise. Okay, she's beast mastery oriented. Okay, so I can make Jin like marksmanship oriented. I like that idea. Get out here, guild thing. Okay, I'm just gonna set up Acolyte like Jin now with some stuff. Ranger. Uh, let's get her scouts insignia. You know what? I feel like it. Three, four, five. And then I'm going to make her superior marksman. Minor expertise. Minor wilderness survival. Oh, yeah, and then I need to put in these Scouts Insignia. Scouts Insignia give you armor well in preparation, so that seems good to me because I expect her to be using preparations a lot. Fourteen to twenty-seven, you eight, fifteen over fifty long, but I mean that's that's one point off max, so it's like that's fine. Um. Yeah, so like if you go to we're going to do a roguelite in a moment here but if you go to um, LA let's see, where's the yeah, there's Graham ooh, lots of people on right now I keep seeing you in the deep clean star how's that going? I don't the last time I we tried doing that, it did not go well. 
Uh, let's see. So this battle axe is just raw damage plus three versus undead. Just built in. Oh, that come with higher than min stats. Yeah. Hmm. But it's just like, oh yeah, and this battle axe, just, just plus three armor versus undead. Like, it's not quite max. It's a little bit off. It's uh, three points short of max on the top end. But then if you're fighting the undead, it's it's a little bit better than max, right? Um, it's just very weird. Doesn't have a proper inscription though. Um, sixteen twenty-eight, yeah. And like same thing with this longbow is it's just like damage plus three versus undead. More armor versus undead. Mm, a bunch of these, except this one. This is just randomly armor plus five versus giants. Or this warhammer is plus four armor versus undead. And this longsword is damage plus three versus giants for some reason. Hmm. That's a little frustrating. Alright, let's go back to uh, Aurora Glade. It's over here. Let's see now. Oh. I'll show this... And you go, I also have this template draft that I finished. Those who are interested. We'll look at that in a little bit. Hmm. Well, I was just talking about our increased damage versus certain types of enemies, but uh, let's drop expertise and marksmanship both a point in, in the wilderness. Uh, we'll go 14 there. That's fine. Those won't apply to the base damage on the weapons, I think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, plus five damage against undead or whatever. But it's like, there was a note on Ogre Slaying Knives of saying, like, these are the only weapons, or this is the only weapon that has plus damage against a type instead of, like, plus 20%. Uh, I'm assuming this is you. Uh... Why are you... Huh? I am confused. That was not you. I have no idea. That was very random. Okay, uh, where was I? I was giving... Acolyte Jin some skills. Um... Do I have... Restore life. Res chant, but not restore life. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't need the... Uh, that, though. Um, natural stride is good. I wanted... Yes, ignite arrows, please. That's what I, that's what I secretly wanted from here. Ooh, maybe I should give her a flame trap too. Just looking at my options. I think I like flame trap. Yeah. You remember walking through Kranang one day and some play came up and tossed a lot of junk. I said, thanks for free stuff, expecting... They want to cash for it. Yeah. Uh, that's a little weird. I could go with Dust Trap. I think f I want Flame Trap for energy management reasons, though. I don't think there's any sort of secondary thing that I want here. Uh, assassin stuff can be kind of useful sometimes, maybe, but... Hmm. I think it probably does all that I want it to right now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll call it good. Yeah, just wanted some slight modification to what she was doing. It seems fine. Uh, 
You accidentally traded the wrong person in GTOP recently. I said sorry, but they instead gave me a flower just because. Huh. Interesting. All right, well, let's go fight some white mantle, I guess. I don't think there's anything else that I need here. Yeah, this should be fine still. Slightly more offensive than defensive. And I definitely didn't need not. I definitely did not need as much hex removal as I had. Hmm. And I have fast cast rest chance on uh, Dunkoro off of Healer's Boon, which is a nice little bonus. Hey, Warthogs. Yeah, I've not been using my pet because my pet is like... Mm. Uh, takes forever to actually start attacking. I wish they could make pet AI different in PvE and PvP so that you could actually make your pets better in... PvE, because part of the reason why pets are so, like, I guess, inept at beginning to attack and stuff is because they, uh, if they were, like, they could make the AI for pets better, but if they did, they'd be too powerful for PvP, is basically what it came down to. I remember seeing that on the, like, wiki probably somewhere, and it's like, oh. I, I see. So pets have to be kind of derpy, or otherwise they would just be even more redonkulous in uh, PvP. I see. Yeah, this bar's been working out pretty, pretty well. I've been enjoying it. I do need to pick up a few more skills. I need to have back off to Nightfall to get some stuff and yeah this is accurate that direction just leads to like an overlook I think it's difficult to try to balance for both things because they need radically different balances Well, it was... My understanding is they wanted to remove something and it kind of, like, took them from everywhere instead of, like... Like, they wanted to get rid of them. Yeah. I don't know exactly what it was, but I, I remember seeing that it was not supposed to be as um, thorough as it ended up, which I... You know what would, would be friggin' cool to be able to do is, like... Are they scrimmages? I don't know. Where you where you GVG against yourself? Um, I remember doing duels in that. I don't know if you still can or not, but um, yeah, for sure. But uh, anyway, like, ooh, eighteen plant fibers. That guy was generous. Uh, that's not the U map. See, do I need to go that way or this way? I don't remember my geography here. I think this way works. Um, but yeah, I remember being able to take heroes into those as well. And you can do some fun stuff. Nah, I'd like to do some GVG. I'd need more players going on with the guild, but. Yeah, I've done okay in... Frankly, I think it's just better to do HA for faction than it is Zaishin Elite at this point. Zaishin Elite would be great to farm if you could actually, like, build a hero team for it, but the way it currently is, it's just too sketchy. Yeah, it is. Well, my thing is... Oh, nope, still got it. Okay. This is 
one of those missions that I've developed a much more efficient strategy, or like a much more reliable strategy for. I still don't know what happened to make these vine animations not play properly. Like these vines aren't here anymore, but they should have had like a growing away animation and it's just broken and I don't know why. Remember, convert hexes cannot target the caster. Target other ally. Very important when facing abbots. They like to use convert hexes when you're using a bar that use hexes. I mean, I don't need anything to kill you, Wind Riders. You're level 12. Just convenient. Ah, but now I have to wait for this to recharge. That's kind of lame. I remember when Antidote Signet just took off the conditions it mentions. Poison, Disease, and Blind. Instead of also an additional condition, and I did not need to fight these guys. And yet it has happened anyway. Switch to farming archaic capa shells for your 2020s. Been a bit too efficient. Now to bank tab filling up rapidly. Whoops. Uh, filling up specifically with capa shells? Or 2020 sets? And do you sell 2020 offhands to other players? Is that a strategy? Or if that's an efficient strategy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't particularly need any, I don't think, but. Ah, look. I found more spiders. Spiders get punishing shot when you go into hard mode. Mm, you have the green sets on some heroes. Really? Really? 30 60 for. Because that's just the Drockner stuff, right? That's, uh. Wingstorm and Hanaku's focus. Uh, so this was a while back then. This would have been interesting. So that's... Thirty-six Ectos. I must have been from the period when Ectos were not worth as... Like, Ecto prices have gotten back to I don't even know friggin' win. The Magus, the Magus from the Illusion boss, of course, sure. I see Acolyte Jin has energy problems. I'm not surprised. Where am I in this? Okay, I'm near less longbow. Yeah, well, the price of Vectos is really climbed. As of late. These guys don't activate until you get close. I have no idea why. Give us the bonus. Do people tend to offload Ectos to get money for Nine Rings? Oh, interesting. Hm. I did not know this.
Wow. Well, they've particularly spiked as of late. Oops, I walked too far from the lesson and they stopped telling me about the bonus. There we go. Hey, I'm an assassin. I can actually properly do this. Yeah. So that way you can get uh, get your... That I need to pick up this stupid rock. Your uh, your title. Thorn pedestal. Have a glowy rock. Yes, I know. I know game. Hmm. And I'm assuming that's a hard mode retention rate. Which is pretty friggin' impressive. My hard mode retention rate's like 23%. Uh, normal mode on locked chests is 53. That's probably a spot where it would have been good to have Death Blossom, but whatever. We're doing things my way, which is not with Death Blossom right now. Yeah. This part works a bit easier with minions, but I did not bother trying to bring any. Mm. Mm hmm. See, the strategy here is to just not give them any anyone living to run effectively. But it is quite possible the super over aggro here, so uh that's where we're at right now. We're in super over aggro. But it's okay. I have splinter weapon. And Jin is making use of it. Okay, here comes the next runner. Good job, General Morgan, on the body block. I know you weren't trying to, but nevertheless, good job. Let's get this Abbot out of here. There we go. Man, this is just like relic running in friggin... Halt, Heroes Ascent. Of course, all you get are purples. I'm beginning to wonder if chests have their own DR. Just a Siri. Blocks the corner and kills her on his own. Um... I've been using the two degen PvE skills for your kappa farm. Yeah, radiation field and um Yeah. Mesmer one. Well, assassinated that guy. That bonus is just like extra. I wanna kill all of those guys anyway to make sure that they can't cap. It's a lot easier than trying to play running with them and just kill all of their guys. Yeah, fortunately, Acolyte Jin, I think, was uh, was getting some Splinter Weapon hits in. So that was working nicely. 
It makes life so much easier when you don't have to worry about them possibly being able to have things. Once you learn that they don't have an infinite supply of guys, it just becomes so much easier. You know? Yeah. Yeah, they have some really good damage reduction. Which is part of what makes the uh, the turtle so tanky, as it has a similar thing going on. Ooh, we got Grook Plugalug over here again. I feel like we saw that name previously, so that's why I said again. Mm-hmm. Because it's just raw damage reduction. Like, that's the sort of effect that makes D-Gen actually good. And they don't have stupid inner fire-like destroyers. Making it all irrelevant. Uh, like, you'd think D-Gen would be good against destroyers, except for the part where they just gave them a bunch of resistance to that sort of thing. I actually need to give Acolyte Jin some energy management. I think she would really like Body Shot, but... Oh, did Inner Fire used to not do anything? 30 HP a second is ridiculous. Destroyers don't need it. Yeah. Oh well. It it would have been nice though if like Degen strategies would have been been good against destroyers. Like oh yeah, I want to spread disease and poison and bleeding on destroyers in order to kill them. Uh, but nope, nope. They just completely invalidate it with their not even health regen nonsense. I mean, in terms of game updates, you're talking a recent update in the grand total scheme of like that, not time-wise, but in like yeah, happened. Hello. I want to try to pronounce your name correctly. Uh, Chris Distinct? I don't know. Hello. Uh, can anyone in chat that can suggest what item you should take at the end of Factions Campaign for Warrior? I agree the uh, caster items seem a bit lackluster. I mean, yeah, you can you can just sell the the thing to players. Um, I mean, Shiro's Blade is a very unique thing. It depends upon what you're doing with your warrior. I like the fact that Vampiric is interesting. <laughs> Garcia does like watching, uh, or Inigo uh, does like watching. I really wish Hinge of Dunravi had more going in. It's so big and expansive and, like, ugh. It frustrates me that it is, like, so devoid of anything happening. And then they, they, there's, like, no quests here. Yeah, like, the, the daggers are all fine, and Shiro's blades are really cool uh, for assassins. May the gods protect you. But nope, this person just, just says that they're watching you. They're not... They, they don't have any quests. Um, yeah, the shields are nice. The caster stuff is all pretty lackluster. I agree. I don't remember if there's a good spear or not. I don't remember what spears they have available there. They added spears later, again. obviously. I don't know why I'm looking at this. There's nothing I need here. Um. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the token's the main thing. I need to talk to Shadow for the only quest here. Yeah, there's some good spears in Nightfall. I 100% agree. There's no reason to get multiple May spears the same stats. Protect you. Uh, yeah, give me my... 
my quest. My the only quest. It it just boggles my mind that there are not more quests in Henge of Dinravi. It feels like there it feels like there should have been a whole thing of like quests in Henge of Dinravi taking you to uh like back into Crichton territory in order to do Shining Blade sabotage things against the White Mantle. Nope, just nothing. Just absolute nothing. Oh yeah, here's the NPC you were talking about. Suggested you to get the DPS one for Warrior. So you went with that. Spirit of the Forgotten is usually what I get there. I like the um, the other spears in the other campaigns. Because you can get a 15 over 50, like, Fortitude. Uh, did I just see you run by? Yeah, I did. You are right next to me. In you go. Um, what does this axe do? Oh, it's just a 15% enchanted axe. At one point in time, you could craft a... Uh, yeah, this is a bunch of 2020 stuff. Oh, interesting. Um, The sword here, you could craft a plus 5 energy sword, and that was a huge deal. But they changed that. Although the one they're still out there and apparently worth a bajillion cash for no good reason. Uh, factor value and all that nonsense. Is this a secret orders from Avenia? I mean, that's where you can get some max ones. Henjim and Ravi for like just slightly off max, but like. 20% the cost because they're like down to energy is definitely a, uh, a thing to consider. Where even is Carlotta? Oh, should be out here somewhere making, oh. Right there, just very slowly making webs for some reason. What a weird mechanic. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, saving a giant polycache is certainly not bad. Can you salvage these marking webs at all? No, they're just a random quest item. I don't know why you're supposed to follow Carlotta here. It's very, very bizarre. Life pod, please stop being here. Thank you. I need to save this bar. This bar is pretty cool. I like it. It really does want Radiant Insignia if you're going to use this uh, in the Shadow Step to get in, but... Vazberg Armory. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Uh, you're distinct. I don't know. Let me know if I'm pronouncing your name at all correctly. Are you relatively new to the game then, or? So, because Capo won like planets. Hmm. Template code. Ah, yes. Ether Nightmare, Radiation Fields. And then, yeah, just this sort of standard stuff. <laughs> gotcha, yeah. Not playing in a long time. And forgetting half the mechanics will definitely affect things. I need to go talk to old Jones, or Jones. I don't know why. Because he has two S's on the end of his name, it looks like Jones to me instead of Jones. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot you're missing out on, man. Take that, Jungle Troll. Oh, man. So many of them. Eternal Grove. Oh, right. There's a uh, Mesmer boss just outside there. Not also where the Scar Eater is. Well, that guy died too quickly. Cool. Love Mesmer bosses that wand for 300 plus damage. It's great. Exactly what they should be doing. The statue is really cool when you have favor. Uh, I hear you had a son. There we go. Riverside Province. Yeah. Let me click Blade Warrior Derek. What weird weapons do you want to give me this time? Uh character. Stop being hung up on random edges, please. Thank you. Ooh, granite slab. An earth scroll. Armor plus three versus physical damage and armor plus five while casting. That doesn't really feel that useful, TBH, but here we are. Okay, where is my... There it is. Ah. That's a lot of missions. Working on your, uh, something or another title, Guardian. Okay, I probably want to drop Acolyte Jin though, for this, probably. I kind of want... An elementalist. You, I usually make you water. You don't have anything right now, right? You don't even have... Okay. Let's fix this. Uh, the rest of the stuff can go away slowly, tediously. I'll get there eventually. Being able to spawn bonus weapons super useful. How long it takes to actually get all of them kind of tedious. I see. This doesn't feel complete if you haven't. Uh... There you go. Free up that inventory space. Okay, uh, let's get Serenia her water stuff. Uh, minor energy storage is very expensive for some reason, relative to what I'd expect. I don't know why, I just am feeling snares right now for some reason. Um, you know what? Yeah, let's just go ahead and get your Hydromancers. Cool. If there's other things that would be useful, but we ain't buying them, so. Goodbye.
The off hands you farm with jade bracelets, only craft with the wands because you can find any other source. Plus 60 HP ritualist staffs? I mean, Kersh's staff can be plus 60 HP. I. Uh, yeah. I have a lot of plant fibers. Okay, um, let's deposit the rest of this platinum because I don't need it right now. And let's go figure out a bar for. Yeah. Serenia, which is going to start with water magic and energy storage. The communing staff. Mm. Okay, let's see. What elementalist stuff do I have access to here? Uh, cool, I can dual attune. Do I have deep freeze? I do. Okay, let's... Uh, deep freeze, water... Saw Maelstrom in there too as I was glancing through. Where is that? There it is. Maelstrom. I think I'm going to put on Aura of Restoration maybe as a cover chant. Farming stuff for relics. And you have a fully kitted hero squad. There you go. Uh, ice spikes. I kind of want to just focus more on the damage angle here. Although... Third vision's not a bad idea. Um... And then yeah, let's just bring a spear. Make that last, last skill a res. Or, and uh, let's just bring Swirling Aura. That's fine. Relying pretty heavily on Maelstrom for Overcast, but I think that'll be fine. The heroes are probably going to spam it anyway. That'll work. Uh, he's fine. Whatever. He's he's got his energy going. What matters here. This might be a little awkward just because I'm having to deal with dudes up on hill, but um, I c let's okay. Let's just go ahead and save this. I like this bar. Um, essence, promise, crippling chain. Uh, I think. It might be better for me here to go more ranger angled. So let's go ahead and swap my headpiece. And just use my bow here. My particular short bow that I currently have. Uh, all these things can go away because I'm not going to... I want to keep antidote segment because it's really useful. <laughs> Mist form, maelstrom, deep freeze. Yeah. Uh, frankly, the player base has a lot more stuff that they're providing you than you used to have back in the day. That's probably the biggest change, um, really, is that the player base is just significantly more knowledgeable than it used to be. I do have distraction shot. Excellent. So, like, when you look at how you you would have played previously versus now, I think that's probably one of the bigger differences. Uh, is you just have so much more to work with. I really wish I had, but I don't. So whatever doesn't matter. Um. I might as well slap on critical agility.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's just one of the things is just our understanding of the mechanics of the game has grown substantially from what it used to be. And there's just no real substitute for that just being the case. I think this is going to be vampiric, and I'm just going to go ahead and make it vampiric now instead of wandering around that way. Yeah, I'll do some other stuff later. Why do I have this in here? I mean, it's, it's a fine bow, I guess. Um, this mission is important to, like, be careful about aggro quantities. Yeah. It's true. Like, Mesmer heroes weren't getting used back in 07. And why would they be? Did I just stop a vampiric? Maybe. Cool, their armor. This is what, plus 17? Yeah, that's pretty good plus damage on Barrage. It's really easy to forget that Barrage is a bunch of plus damage. I mean, that's the thing, is like, just the state of the game in 07 was very different than what it is now. has changed a lot. Ooh, those are some good hits. Yeah. Probably. Um, I'm sorry, Dead on Stick, but you do know that, that I wanted Barrage for AoE and it, it would strip disrupting accuracy, right? I mean, the henchmen are still not amazing even now, uh, depending upon where you go. They're competent for the most part, but... Freaking... <sighs> Factions Jade Sea is wretched. I really need... Why use incendiaries instead? I mean, this character hasn't been that far, so I don't have incendiary arrows. Also, it has a much longer recharge. At five seconds instead of one second. Ooh. Swanky. I have disrupting accuracy bars too. Look, I'd help you fight those if I could actually get over there, but I cannot because the door is in the way. I'm not looking forward to having to deal with the whatever we want to call it. Okay, can we do something about this empathy? <laughs> yeah, running preparations of Barrage Bar be a uh, big question mark. Target's obstructed. Not from right here, though. Does your bank need more offhands with 90%? 90%? I don't know. I need to sell a 20% forget-me-not. I just haven't gotten around to it. It's like... I don't know. What, what do I price anything at? That's the first problem.
That's one of the tweaks I'd make to this game, though, is I'd make it a lot... Like, I would make either a trader or the ability to buy them with Z-Coins for weapon mods, because that would just make the game so much more pleasant. What did I get? Radiant? Radiant's not bad. Uh, salvage the stuff on my way to not this spot I'm standing in. Nineteen percent is usually fetch. Yeah. Yeah. Not that far off twenty either. It's mathematically like close enough. I do have disrupting accuracy. Whatever that's worth. With 18 to 20%, 1920s. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really have much need for them. I could really go for... Oh man, look at that sweet, sweet water magic snaring action. Just like invalidating these Justicars and their efforts to pursue my poor Mesmer. And then I get to barrage them as they bundle up. Oh, it's beautiful. It feels bad merchanting a bunch of stuff. Ugh. I wonder what this game's economy would look like if we had a, a Guild Wars 2 style trading post. That would just change so many things. Pew. This is not the right angle. Oh, well, I mean, if it works, I guess. Where's this guy at? It's always really annoying when stuff drops up on those. I still don't know why any Q above 9 can drop. Or, I guess Q12 isn't bad, but I don't understand Q13. Like, the fact that there's stuff that drops that can be not that, and then also that, I guess is kind of what it comes down to. Like, I don't necessarily mind, like, um, if something was exclusively Q13. Okay. Like, Shiro's Blades or a Sword or whatever. I'm just like, ah, this is my exclusive, my, my bonus for this, but... I, I frankly don't have a problem with that. Of like, oh yeah, this skin is locked to primary, but um, I don't know that you did. Uh, I've just been wandering through here talking about weapon requirements and trying to not die. Hey, you, get over here. You have some plus one heal and prop monk collector off hands. Another tab. Oh, okay, Madden Madness AFK survivor teams. Yeah, because that lets you get stuff that you need. Uh, for breakpoints. Okay, but like Sycophant, maybe you can not do some Shatter Enchantment stuff, shall we? Have you try not doing that? 
Plus five mend and minus two E prop bond. Yeah. I'd like to get 50 50 in Hall of Monuments. I just need more titles for it. I have everything else. I'm just short on titles. Okay, these abbots, these abbots need to know the business end of my bow. Oh yeah, sweet maelstrom action. Burn the implacable. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just like, here is a random goal to accomplish for no particular reason. That's all I really need in this game. The game is fun to play. I just need random goals to give me some direction in what I'm doing. Okay, well, that's cleared out that watchtower. There should be another one over here. Yeah, I don't really care about the Guild Wars 2 rewards because that would require me to be enjoy playing that game and therefore spend time in it and therefore making the rewards useful. Let's see. How does loot work in the game, by the way? Like, you know some mobs when you zone in somewhere, the first couple don't drop anything. Um... There's some code to make it so that way, like, you don't get drops as much the first short bit after going into a portal to try to... There's a bunch of code to try to make farming not work in the game or to be less efficient uh, because ArenaNet needed to try to balance the in-game economy and they did it by killing farming as much as they possibly could. That's, that's kind of what it comes down to. Okay. Took down the annoying guys. Now my Hydromancer can do their work. Yeah, they try to kill solo, solo farming. Like, I can understand, but it doesn't change the fact that I get kind of annoyed at it. I still miss the griffin farming. Like. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, like, being able to effectively solo farm does require very specific builds and whatnot, so. Okay, like, I get it. It's obstructed. Where can I stand where it's not obstructed? Those are really awkward, but whatever. Yeah, I do know you can melee them at the door, but that doesn't help my bow, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, and I'm a bow assassin right now. All right, let's take these guys out. Show them, show them who's the boss. Oh, yeah. Get Maelstrom and stopped. Excellent. You need to get out of here. We are bowing. Uh, because... 
this mission has dudes up in watchtowers, so I felt like it. And also to help me control aggro by not running after things. And also, I just felt like barraging. Really, is kind of what it comes down to. I like that this character delivered the scepter before taking the scepter. Also, I did not realize that there's just like a side path just back up inside. Literally, instead of taking the side door, we could have gone back out and around. So that's a thing. Ritualist Construct is potentially you're looking at the one from Sunjiang District, maybe? There's some wonkiness with um, some of those. So you might want to... Yeah, there's some super wonky wonkiness with some of the ritual bosses in uh Cause there's there's a ritualist boss right outside Unwaking Waters Kurzik. Um Right by the strong root boss, whose shield I have on my warrior Baratus. Yeah, there's like two or three. It's it's ridiculous. Because the construct is like a concept of a boss rather than like a name. So like, oh, one has this elite and then this elite. It's just, there's some weird malarkey going on with it. And I got super confused when I was capturing elite skills. Yeah, silent surf, okay. Yeah, so that's like, that's part of what makes things really confusing. I don't know why, it, it's in particular the ritualist bosses that are that are particularly messed up in that regard. Oh, the Irukandji, yeah, yeah. I know the I know the guy you're talking about. You must be using a reversal of fortune. That's why I hit for zero damage. Give me that. Yeah, the Soul Twist boss is just outside. Uh, and Waking Waters Kurzik. And again, that's by the Strong Root boss I was mentioning as well. This mission has an extensive, like, backside to it. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna cause myself infinite damage with empathy. This is why I wanted Barrage as my side. Where did those guys come from and why are they here? And has different elites in different locations too, just to add some additional confusion on top of everything else. It's like, does does it really need to have a different elite in this location? I know. I think I know what it was. The the there's a boss in Raisu Palace. In the mission version, it has one elite, and in the explorable, it has another. That's the that's the one that I'm getting super confused over. It's a weird ranger hack. Determined shot. If if something's blocking you, because rangers have a wide variety of skills. Um, yep, that's the problem. That's one of the problems I have with factions design. You've you've tangented me, but is that the world's not not quite as ridiculously expansive as prophecies, but it's still pretty good sized. But because of the Kurzak Luxon thing, you kind of only explore half of it. 
Or, like, there's a quarter of it that you don't explore normally. Uh, and it's kind of ridiculous. You can get to Kurzik's side by... Or Luxon's side by getting enough Luxon faction and talking to the gate guard um, outside of the um, the door. They say that they won't let you in, but then they, they just let you in. Um, but yeah, so anyway, something with rangers that you can do that's kind of wonky. Kind of a fun little uh, piece of functionality. Is because... Um, they have so many skills like Arcing Shot that can't be blocked. Determined Shot can recharge those if they're blocking. So you can alternate Determined Shot and like Arcing Shot, for example, just to get all like every other attack be unblockable. It's very weird. It's kind of a neat, neat bit of how Rangers work. So if an enemy's blocking you, just swap between those two. Okay, cleared that one out well enough. <laughs> if you've done befriending the Kurzix, you can just walk on Waking Water. Uh, do you have to have done befriending? I thought it was just, like, your faction was high enough. Like, you have more of the faction for one side than the other. That was it. Scattered. One of those. It's like, I'd be worried about all these dudes attacking me if I didn't have Healing Seed on me, but... Healing Seed kind of invalidates all of them at once. Hmm. There's uh, some NPCs you can talk to to have them teleport you through gates. Gone. Let's just do a couple of auto attacks for a moment here. Get my energy back up. Spamming a lot of barrage. No, I recognize. I cannot see this person. Structures, whatever. My casters will get there. Okay, what did I miss? Do I need to kill these Justicars? Ooh, dress gear. That's a good uh, Ascalonian location. Uh, I wish... Uh, I won a game set during King Adelburn's Rise to Power. Okay. I need to... Because I've done so much of this already. I need to go figure out... Which one of these am I missing? Hang on, Scepter. You're going to just need to chill there. Because I don't have the bonus yet, so that means I'm missing a watchtower somewhere. So I'm going to have to backtrack and find which one I'm missing. I think there's one in there that I'm missing. Thankfully, General Morgan is on a fallback incoming chain, so that speeds this up tremendously. Remember to stay hydrated, folks. It would have been cool to see Ascalon more fully before the Searing. I I would really like a tactics game, like a Fire Emblem, following the rise of King Adelburn. I think that would be sweet. Yeah, this, this watchtower here that I missed. This one's easy to overlook, though, because it's, like, it's not on the path, right?
Okay, white mantle. Let me give you the business end of my bow. Which is actually the arrows. Hey, there we go. There's the bonus. Cool. Things customized. Yeah. It's taking these guys out because they're attacking me right now. Fill this man with arrows. Nope, oh, Seeker over there is interested in what's going on. Nope, oh, not anymore, ain't. Okay, let's uh, let's make our way back now that we've got the bonus, because we can leave. You know, the White Mantle aren't going to pick up the scepter just sitting there with a boss guarding the bridge, because that's not how this game works. You did a good job, Srenia. Keeping them occupied with ice magic. That's what I wanted. What I wanted. Uh, I should probably take care of some of this inventory while we're doing our run back. Ooh. Ingots. I ran off the wrong direction because I was looking at my inventory. That happens. I don't care about this flat bow, white reaver. Damage plus 14% in a stance, nowhere near max. I don't need a shocking bow, I know that. Disciples of Vitae. Vitae is valuable at the moment. Oh, I missed. Okay. I'll take a couple of Vitae's. And that's an unidentified truncheon. Identified. 71 gold. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, and that recurve bow is already identified at 34. All right, Cyrus the Unflattering. What does that mean as a name to be called the Unflattering? Uh, is he supposed to just stand there, not doing anything? See, but like that doesn't, I would think that too, except Unflattering as a name, like, means that he makes something unflattering? Like, unflattering just doesn't, like, grammatically work to my mind? Oh, it's very strange. But basically, that's, like, the best I can come up with as well here. Can't come up with anything better. It's just a very strange name. All right. That leaves a bunch of missions in the Crystal Desert. Which one would be best to do first? Let's see, I don't need Marksman's Wager, so I don't need to capture anything here. Well, either way, let's go take care of some inventory. Then I think, yeah, let's do something on a different character. Uh, once I've done this, that way I remember it's a thing that needs to happen. Wait, I don't need that. I have one right here. And yeah, the Radiant is worth pulling out. Maybe I should give that to somebody. Norgu, do you have... Anything going on? Not really. Let's go ahead and give you a radiant on your chest piece. Okay, um... 
I'm gonna sell those Vitae runes, because Vitae runes are worth too much right now. And uh, then let's dump this guy back off in the Crystal Desert, and let's go do something. Oh, uh, look at that. Almost two pot apiece. Crazy. But this is coming along pretty nicely now. So a long ways to go, but coming along. Uh, oh yeah, while I'm here, I do want to pull this enchanting mod off. I'll stick it on here. Okay, uh, cool. Let's let's go to a different character and let's just do something else for a bit. Um, You know what? I haven't been playing this guy lately. Let's hop on him. Let's give him a chance. My oldest ranger. He is. Got a bunch of random equipment. Probably figure out something to do with them. Young Heroes of Tyria. Huh. Well, don't necessarily need to do that. But how's your Let's see? I could just do another. I have the north. Now nah, let's go. Let's go to Commodon. Let's do a, a Nightfall's book. Let's work on one of those. Just normal mode one. And some more Lightbringer for him. Okay. Uh, so. This doesn't need to have anything done to it. We're going to go over the template draft. Written evidence. I'd like an empty copy of Nightfalls. I'll be on my way. Thank you. Okay, uh, this requires us to start in Consulate Docks, so let's go over to Consulate Docks, right? I think that's the first one. If I remember correctly. So we need to bring down Coral. Uh, this guy can totally run Poison Fangs, I believe, so let's go ahead and grab this one. I mean, I'm kind of like half set up for it already. Uh, no, template code. Load this in. I definitely want a different hat. Uh, probably my expertise hat. That'll work. Okay. Um, I should be equipping my zealous daggers as well. I'm gonna want them. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do I have here? I need to bring Dunkoro because Dunkoro is mandatory for this mission. We're just trying out this uh, this thing, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, um, I need two hammer warriors and a sword warrior. So that's all of my warriors. I need to be thinking about that one for sure. <laughs> An ego is cheating, eh? <laughs> uh. Okay. Oh. Door's not even set up. Okay. Um let's see, warrior, warrior, warrior. And then Oh, I need another two monks and a dervish. Uh how about you, Milani? Okay. I already did this drafting part, so. Uh, ooh. Okay, conveniently, this guy already has this bar loaded. He already has the boon prop bar, it looks like. Uh, 9, 9, 12. Yeah, okay. He already has this bar. Yep. Yep, lots of ways of making them gates do what you want. Uh, you can be one of these. How about... 
Let's see. I think you're probably holding... Yeah, centering around a charge. How about I load you... Um... Earthshaker Aftershock. Where do I even have that template? Not... Because Signet of Judgment is right here. You know what? I'll just load this one onto you. And I'll go to cost and figure out where the other one is. Oh. You know what? We'll go to Jora. Give her this hammer. And give her that one. Cost, you get Plague Sword. Uh, this one. And then Jora, you need a, this hammer bar. Now, I should have this somewhere. Probably under novelty. Nope, that's Prophecy's Box Hamstorm. This is one of those spots, like, I know I have all these templates saved, or at least I'm pretty sure. I just don't know where all of them are. Okay, not here. Under heroes? Yeah, here it is. Earthshaker Aftershock. Yeah, there it is. Uh, and then I need... Let's see. Okay, I'll just go... Glimmer of Smite on her. Glimmer of Light right here. Uh, and Ogden can get the... Uh, Protection Healer bar. Because Dunkora already has the boon. So, Protection Healer here. Uh, that is an EW pre build? Nope. It is an old pre build. This one. Cool. Uh, and then Milani. Currently wielding. Okay. Uh,. Let's swap over to Mox then. It doesn't have Kamu. That's interesting. Mox has a scythe. Uh, let's give Unseen Lissa. Wherever the heck I put that one. Right here. Unseen Lissa. Okay, so those are my templates that I drafted. Um, time to do this mission, I guess. We'll see how it goes. Not a bad bar, necessarily. Wants a few more attributes, but eh, it'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Some solid ideas here. This this Unseen Lissa bar will actually work decently well in this mission, just because Unseen Fury gives unblockability, and Dust Cloak can keep spamming it. Okay, Raid Marshal. We're ready for our fight. This is so much melee. Uh, we're just going to do this normal mode because my bars are nowhere near optimal. Nightfall template draft. Let's just update this information. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's go do the thing. I'm going to need to apply poison a lot. Oh, boy. We're going to have a real hard time getting damage through, folks. Well, that guy can degen to death now. I mean, if they can't block, then they're hosed, but... So much blocking happening. You know what? I'm gonna Let's see. This is yeah. Okay, those are wilderness, that's wilderness survival set. I'm just gonna. Why is it not swapping? Okay, yeah. 
that, that was hidden. There we go. We're just gonna go over to my druids. This is a radiant set because that's what druids is, and I want higher energy pool. I guess I don't strictly speaking have to do bonuses, but uh, I generally try to try for master's rewards. Did my? Of course it did. Why wouldn't it? Okay, so I just need to make sure I have a ranger bar. This guy. Takora, I'm sorry. Your energy is questionable. Hey, you have Castigation Signet. We got a little bit of damage on Talcora, at least. I need to take care of the Captain Imanda. Who is currently having a very bad day. I think if you take her down, fewer troops spawn, so... Thanks, Cormier, I guess? Huh? They're behind us! Quickly! nice to be able to just pull out Temple Strike for an additional offhand attack. I wonder how effective Koss is being. Well, his energy is all going to one expensive skill, so that's going okay, I suppose. Well, there goes my fly poison. Kind of glad <laughs> I have multiple monks, because several of them do not have very good bars for energy efficiency. such a weird team comp and I love it. I love doing something weird and unusual and I need to go talk to the Ternarashi? I think it is. Yeah, okay. Let's move out. It's just water. This could actually work really well now that I think about it on um, Veritas. Because he has a lot of weapons he could let heroes use temporarily if need be. Wow, that's a lot of defense. Takora's bar is so weird. Like, I can't help but feel it's at least moderately effective, but... I think template drafts are going to be great. Oh, 
like as a long-term prospect. I just need more interesting templates and I'll probably try to make some intentionally interesting tools. Mox is in position. Oh, and both of my monk are all three of my monks are like no no Dunkor's doing okay on energy. The other two are not, but Dunkor's doing okay on it. Castigation signet's definitely helping Taki. We didn't really want to be fighting two groups there, but we ended up anyway. You can rush Jora, it's fine. <gasps> oh man. Just seeing Mox just shadow step right in into <laughs> horde of dudes is fun for some reason. I like what's going on with this bar, at least conceptually. That's a solid idea, which is the idea of making him just really hard to block because he's spewing these conditions everywhere and stuff. Oh man, I could go Zen my mode. Let's go Zen my mode. Actually, I think I have a spare Zen my tonic. I need to be moving to her. Mox's bar? Yeah. It's just, it's an interesting idea, right? Because you're, the idea is you're trying to spam Dust Cloak as much as you can. And like, that allows you to use the unblockability from Unseen Fury because you're constantly spamming blind everywhere. Ow. And that means that like in these situations, Mox is actually my biggest damage dealer <laughs> because Mox can't be blocked. And it's just spamming everything with blinds. And I love it. Yeah, these corner arches are really annoying. If you don't have any anti-blind skills on you. Or any anti-block skills, excuse me. I'm doing blind so much I'm getting confused on my words. Yeah, like there's lots of ways to get around it, but th this team is just like five melee attackers and three monks, so it has no way around it whatsoever. I will say this. Shield of Regen is a great skill. Happy, happy to have it here. But yeah, I definitely want to try to draft a little bit caster heavier for the next mission.
Your antidote signal is not going to keep up with this, dude. Got bad news. I see you have whirling defense. There we go. Somebody that's not spamming whirling defense. Mana damage is bad against those rangers. There we go. Apparently I hadn't gotten masters on that before for some reason. I must have just been being lazy. Let's see, I think after that one is Ventus Cemetery, right? So we need costs here. So Ventus Cemetery. Hmm. Okay, so now the question is, the any builds that I do not save here get yeeted to the winds. So I think I want to make sure to save this one so I can know that I have it to use if need be. And... I want to make sure I'm hanging on to a bar for cost to use, maybe? I'm not thrilled with any of these monks, so I'm okay with those monks getting cast to the winds. Uh, I will save this one. i save those two. Okay, let's start the draft round. Okay. Um, now what do I want? What is this? This is some sort of tease... Oh, but it has guided weapon? That's not bad. I think I want this one. Guided weapon uh, is very useful. Touch Ranger. Can do that. Uh, it's a little awkward to set up, but this is actually a bar that I could be using too if I wanted to. On the other hand, this is what weapon of wardings, sundering weapon. Protect was Kali. Okay, this is kind of more of a healer. Okay, let's grab this blessed light monk and this healer's boon monk. I think. And then, sure, you know what? I'll take this Bipper. Uh, blind Ellie sounds good. Um, Eastone Devotion. So this is symbolic celerity to make, f yeah. Signet of Devotion, Signet of Rejuve. I really don't need whatever this mess is. Um, too much enchantment stripping to make this bar look interesting in these areas. So I guess I'll grab this one. And I wanted more casters, so there we go. Okay. Uh, so the question is... Because I need costs here. So let's add costs back in. And let's grab my hammer off of Jorah. While well, I'm thinking about it. Jorah, give me my hammer back. Or whatever, swap those. Yeah, here, Jorah. Okay. Um. So I need costs. Now, I have an option here, right? Oh no, did I not take the Touch Ranger? Okay, yeah, so the only Ranger bar is this one, so I'm gonna just keep using this one. Uh, and then Koss is gonna stay on that one because that's the Warrior bar that I kept. So now I have... 
I guess I want two different elementalists. This is where I have some options of like what I'm doing. I think I want this writ bar. Oh, no, this is not a writ bar. This is a mesmer bar. The heck? Okay, whatever. I, I want a mesmer then. Um, sure, why not? Uh, Gwen, your domination magic. That is not a domination magic bar. Sure, we'll just use Daedalon. Um, I need guided teasing on Daedalon. Uh, that's probably under heroes, right? Domination. There's guided teasing. Um, has a boy. All right. For some reason, I just assumed that was a ritualist bar, but it was not. Um, I don't really want to use this other writ bar. This Blessed Light bar is also very expensive and maybe a bit less than ideal, but whatever. I can just grab Talcora and Dunkoro, I guess. Talcora, Dunkoro. Dunkoro's got Divine Favor. Let's load the Blessed Light bar onto him. Uh, I believe that's an EW rebuild. Yes, it is. And Talcora can use the healer's boon bar. I think it's this one, right? Uh, it looks like it, yeah. Um, and then I just need a necro with blood magic for the bip bar. Uh, Olias is curses. Probably gonna be Master of Whispers or Takora, right? Okay, he'll work. Uh, this is Holy Blood, so this is every elite. Blood is power. Yeah. No, uh, that doesn't have quite enough. Okay, so that's just aiming for a five anyway. Doesn't really matter. Um, this is fine. Okay, and then I guess the rest of the team is a couple of elementalists. Air and water. Um, so normally that's going to be Vec and Serenia. I don't know if these guys are ruined up. No, they're not. Uh, so I'll give you Blinding Shadows. Yeah, Blinding Surge, this one. And then Vec, I will give the Shatterstone bar to. Yeah, this is fine, question mark. Let's just say I'm really glad I got the Bipper, because I think the Bipper is going to be really important to making these bars not utterly suck energy wise. This has Glyph of Lesser, so that helps. Ooh, 33% less benefit from healing. Um, man, Signet of Shadows feels like it should be a lot more powerful than it is, but here we are. Okay, well, those are the, uh, the bars that I'm rolling with. Um,. Hopefully, Guided Weapon does a lot of work, is all I can say. Because uh, I feel like I'm going to need it to. Let's salvage some of these things, shall we? Ooh, Survivor and Vitae. I see. Horn and Pendants are a good source of iron, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, all right, let's just talk to Rogus and head on in. This is going to be interesting. We need to evacuate the wounded, Rogus, my pal, my friend. 
This is neat in that it like it changes up your bars a lot. Oh yeah, okay. I need to put on the skill. It changes up your bars a lot, but it also like doesn't feel slow in the same way like a codex or something is. Because like okay, you're just figuring out like which templates do you actually want to use and stuff. I don't know. It's it's different. I enjoy it. This is this is a good idea. Wooden. Like, this is based off wooden potatoes monster draft for those who are not familiar uh, with that. So that's that's the root idea. I'm going to go for Masters on this as well, because why not? I don't think your cautery signal is sufficient to deal with my nonsense. Okay. Well, um I wonder how much Zealot's fire triggers off of Bip will do damage in this. Cuz that's the idea behind Holy Blood there is like oh yeah, blood is power will trigger Zealot's fire. <laughs> For whatever that's worth. Here, Bowman. Have some damage. I think I'm using more Zealot's Fire in these last two than I usually use, like, ever. This is just a random aside. One of the things that you'll notice, by the way, in this mission is that... Uh, Whirling defense is particularly damaging because you have this gigantic pile of Sun Spirit evacuees. But I'm hiding because I don't really care. I don't need to see them. But, um, and they're covering my compass. And if I move my thing up high enough to not cover my compass, it will, uh, obscure, be obscured under the face cam. Uh, but anyway, the, um, Uh, okay, that's what I need to do for there. Over this way to this guy. Um, but yeah, they they do a lot of wanding, and so they're going to trigger whirling defense a ton. They will also help with all the monkey needs here, though, which is good because uh, I don't know. this team this team comp is is wacky. That's all I'm saying. Oh man, poor Daedalon's bar is so energy intensive. Hopefully there's been some guided weapon usage. Looks like Koss is getting them. Guided weapon uh, makes your attacks unblockable. So needless to say, it's extremely useful uh, against all of the blocking. And is why I uh, care about it a great deal. Please, guided weapon me. Thank you. But yeah, being able to have my attacks be made unblockable is why I brought that bar along. Because there's just all this nonsense. So bars I don't draft... Uh, get put back into the like draft deck of like templates, but if I did uh, select them and then I don't save them, they kind of go into the, like the discard pile and then get shuffled back in when the uh, the deck runs empty. It's a whole system. It's a whole system. I'm quite pleased with it though. Took a while to get working, but it works pretty well. Oh, 
I need to disable that crap. And the whirling defense damage here is ridiculous. All right, I need to take out this group. Yeah, that skill is easily interrupted, unfortunately. So it's a little hard to stop it when everyone's trying to take you down. I stand over here, they shouldn't be able to get to me, so that'll work. The bonus here is, for some reason, or the masters, is just taking out all of the guard posts. Uh, and they're not, they're positioned, this is a traveling salesman problem. Um, which is just trying to find the optimal route between a bunch of, like, disparate points is tricky. <laughs> Basically is what the traveling salesman problem is. That is a lengthy burn on that cautery signal. Try to slip by up here along the north edge of that. Make my way over to this other guard post. I am getting a lot of judges in sight, which is increasing damage by allowing me to get through some armor, but also armor penetration, allowing me to get through even more armor. So, that's been nice. On the other hand, I'm really glad Dunkoro gets access to a BIP. Because, my goodness, does he need it. This, this bar is one of those bars that like is designed for human player and AI just does not know what it's doing uh, and is gonna use it inefficiently. There's just no getting around that fact. Get a weapon on me, please. Don't know why I have to keep telling him to do that, but oh well. I can, so there's that at least. Yeah, it doesn't have as long of a duration as one might want. But it looks like cost is being a higher priority for it, which is, I guess, fine. Not really what I want, but I had to bring costs, otherwise it would just go exclusively on me. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll go around and get these two guard posts and that one, and I have to go all the way down there. It's, there's no good way through this mission. You just have to kind of keep wandering around until you get everywhere you need to go. Just awkwardly designed that way. Yeah, I'll turn off the sentry trap once I've finished with these guys. Man, Temple Strike is such a ranger skill. It does rangery things, and you really want your expertise in order to be able to do it, which is what I've got here. I'm getting a pretty substantial discount on it, making it a lot more tenable of a skill to use.
Yeah, you can see that guided weapon doing his job, though. Glad I grabbed the Ellie's. Let's just say that. It, their damage is reduced against Rangers, because Rangers have plus 30 armor against elemental damage, but they also um, are not having their damage as severely reduced by whirling defense as I am. Cleared out. Um, go back up that way and get that guard post, I think. Again, traveling salesman problem. How do you like travel to a bunch of different locations and what's the best way to go? And not really one. So you're just kind of left wandering all over. Team comps have been working pretty well. I'm really glad I got this bit bar. I'm probably going to save the bit bar on my bar. Um, just because, A, I want to make sure I have a bar to keep using. Uh, where's the sentry trap? Oh, it's over here. I just saw the activation pop up. I'm like, where is it? Uh, we'll need to go back that way anyway, so it's not the worst to take it down now, I guess. That Carter Signa must have set you on so much fire. There we go. Okay, down to this guard post, over to this guard post. And it's just a pretty simple sweep to the other ones. You can also just try to not do any of the guard posts, which is fine, I guess, but obviously fewer rewards. More efficient. Certainly quicker. I'd definitely do it that way if I were uh, not coming back in here. Do I have... Oh, I do have Cronier Crossroads. That'll be nice. Okay. Uh, let's see about um, this next guard post. <laughs> That's really how this mission works. At least I've got a decent amount of hex removal. Alright, uh, then down that way to the next one. I don't really care about that sentry trap. It's going to activate like a one time anyway, so... Not a huge deal. I should probably take out this group though. I'm going to need to walk through them later and they're coming right for me, so... Oh man, it's so nice to have, what is this days, like eight seconds? It's pretty good. So nice to have a bunch of ability to deal with that. Oh, guided weapon is so nice when it's on me. It just lets me get right through all that nonsense. I love it. Don't get it often enough. I don't mind cost having first dibs necessarily, but...
Yeah, you. Aha. Need to pay attention, though. Make sure I'm going after it when I get guided weapon. This is a weird mesmer bar. Let me just say that. Uh, dissonance for a major interrupting action. I do need to go around up here. Um... Strange, very strange bar. But hey, it does its job, I suppose. Got bad news for you about Cottery Signet. Oh man, I'm glad Takora has, uh... okay, I'm not turning that off while all these guys are attacking me. Okay, well, Koss got the... Uh, if the garrison becomes aware of your presence, they just start sieging you. So I'm not sure what triggered them. I may have just been too close. Okay, siege trap is disabled. Good. Uh, one more. Um, there are, the siege attacks from the garrison are annoying, but they don't actually like get you. This is not as forced stealth as it presents itself as being. It's what I'm saying, basically. Yeah, because this inflicts bleeding on foes, and then this makes foes bleed and allows you to transfer it. Cost is a lot of ways of inflicting bleeding, I'm realizing. So the guard post meter going through all the way is one way for you to catch the attention of the garrison. So obviously it's a good idea to try to clear these out before those that goes off. Because getting siege is annoying. But also just getting close to the garrison, more like a garrison here, uh, will will trigger it if you spend too much time close to it, so. It's best to try to avoid that if you can. Now that I've neutralized all of those, I can head over to Margaret the Sly. Again, I'm partially going for the Masters here because this guy hasn't gotten Masters on it yet, so might as well. Some of them are just, like, trivial to get, relatively speaking, or like they're on your way sort of thing. All right, I just need to cross a bridge, and Margaret's just going to be down down the way a little bit. She's right next to Dodgeka Inlet, which is right down here, which apparently this character doesn't have for some reason. Which feels like a bit of a thing I need to go correct at some point. Not hard outpost to get. Oh, I never wandered over there, I guess. This is one of those things where it's like, I would have assumed this character had done more just because of their pedigree of being like my first ranger, my oldest ranger, however you want to look at that. But nope, that's not how it works. Oh yeah. Again, whenever I get guided weapon, I just feel really good because it's like this really annoying thing that's stopping me no longer stops me. It's just 15 energy last nine seconds and has a five second recharge. Eight seconds, excuse me. So it's like, it, it doesn't... Like, it can be kept up 100% of the time if I were the only one that it mattered for, but that's not the case. I am. Although sometimes I go jagged into uh, Temple Strike, which is pretty good. Yeah, it's too efficient. But it's also efficient, so you use it. <laughs> Part of it, what I'm doing, though, is Jagged plus Apply Poison just gives a lot of degen. 
so. Uh, and then Temple Strike is, is great to be able to drop on things. I am a primary ranger, as you may have noticed. And this dumps me back off in Commandant Jewel of Easton. Um, I'm going to need to clear out my inventory of stuff. Stuff and things. I don't know why I salvaged that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is kind of numb. It's just like doing the same thing over and over and over again is not necessarily the most exciting. Okay, so the next mission is... What is after Venta Cemetery? Is it caught near Crossroads? It might be. They messaged me. That's what you're doing? Sure. Yeah, I mean that's that's a solid dagger spam bar. Um Vow of Revolution's also pretty good with um with dagger spam if you have the spare PvE only slot. Looks like you do with this particular build. Like looks like you're using two. The Vow of Revolution is not quite as like precisely keeping up on energy as zealous vow, but it, you also don't have to reapply it every single time. Or like you you don't have to worry about the the cooldown, so a little bit of a one way or the other sort of thing. This is also this character also has not gotten together as one yet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Valve Revolution is not the same for sure. Uh, I think it is Codnier Crossroads next, but let's just go to Codnier Crossroads. This is, it's like what Codnier. And then Rylon Refuge or Pokemon Passage, Madoc Crevice, T-Hark Orchard, Dagonier Bastion or Dasha, then Grand Court. I mean, I don't necessarily need to do these in, in narrative order, but I'm trying. Hello, Andy F. I assume how you're pronouncing your name. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. As long as no one removes Zell's Vow, you can spam eternally. Yeah. Seven mana per hit, but zero regen. Yep. Yep, That's that's been my experience with that sort of thing as well. It was, it was like, okay, well, lots of energy. Okay, Um, let's drop some stuff off. We need to process that for parts. Don't need this wood. I should not have... Oh, well, I did. What do you got going on, Elonian Daggers? Okay, I want the merchants. Okay, so I do need to bring Zed on this. Okay. Good to know. Okay, salvage kit. Horn pendants are full of iron, so. Let's go ahead and protect that. All right, so that means I don't necessarily need costs. Um, so I need to ask what templates I want to save. I definitely want to make sure I save the Ranger one again. Not necessarily to use, but because I want to make sure it's available. Uh, the question is, do I want to save an Elementalist bar? You know what? I'll save Holy Ground for Zed. Okay. Uh, start draft round. Expand draft round so we can actually see what options I'm getting. Um, ooh, this is an interesting one. Uh, do I want to go physical heavy and pick up, or try to go physical heavy and pick up a um, an orders necro? I do really like this bar. 
Or do I want to go with like fragility and fire? Or tainted flesh? With Aegis support? I don't think I really want that bar. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this one and try to go a little bit more physically oriented. Okay, I do need healers. So I think I'm going to grab this one. Um, I don't really like Ivex Trapper. I'm going to pick Ivex Trapper to try to get it out of the pool. Calculated risk. Soul Spinner's fine. Opal Finale. I think I want to pick up Blown Into the Swamp. Okay, this is fine. Uh, and then, yeah, I want more physical. Let's grab Virulent Spear. Hmm, do I want Weaving Fang? Or Char Hunter? I think I'm gonna grab Char Hunter. Okay. Now I can resize this. Okay, so I for this one I have to bring Zed. Zed Shadow Hoof. So I can use Holy Ground. That's an Elementalist bar. And the rest of them are not. So let's grab Holy Ground. Uh, I think that's probably just under Heroes. Because it's Earth with... Yeah. Anyway. Um, now, I've been doing this particular bar a bunch. So, I think I actually want to do the Char Hunter bar. Uh, which I think is under Heroes. Yeah, there it is. Char Hunter. Um, now, do I have enough physical that I want to bring this... Hmm one. Well, let's grab healers. First, I need a, I need a writ. Oh, I want both of these monks. That feels like too many monks. Do I want this writ? That's a better question. Maybe I grab both of these and... Okay. Let's do... Um, I'm gonna load up Acolyte Jin, Margaret the Sly, and Pyre Fear Shot just to see what the runes are. Any? Okay, he has a marksmanship rune. I could give him the trapper, and then Margaret or Jin doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just. Drop Margaret the Sly for the moment. So if I give him Ivex Trapper, uh, let's see. That's old pre builds. Uh, I have done that sort of restriction thing. But right now, this is just a list of challenge builds that I have over here as kind of a default. I haven't made additional things for this. I'd kind of like to, but... Okay, so then I can load the bar I have been using, which is Poison Fangs, onto her. Um... And then, I guess I just grab a couple of monks and a necro and a paragon. Okay, a um, couple of monks, I uh, for necro and a paragon. Yeah, you'll work. Yeah, that's fine.
Let's see. Crippling composite, short bow of fortitude. Wow, that's got some mods on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I need to swap you out for some daggers. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. We'll, we'll figure out some equipment in a second. Um, okay. So let's just load on the remaining bars. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I want Ogden instead of Talcora. Ogden might be... Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's give Ogden pure protection... That's uh, Mo RT. Oh, uh, because Pyrrha was leaming in its protection prayers. Yeah, I get it. Uh, Dunkoro, you get Watchful Boon. Uh, Master gets uh, Duena's Cultist. Heroes Bar. This one's actually pretty solid. I quite like this bar. You get, um, this applies enchantment party wide and then Mystic Healing can heal party wide and then Vow of Piety keeps triggering or like keeps refreshing itself because of order ending, uh, which works really well. Uh, and then you get Virulent Spear, which is just, yeah, should be in, in Heroes. There it is. Cool. Your points and commands don't mean anything, but here we are. Um, okay, and she needed a set of daggers. I need a not set of daggers. So, what bows do I even have on this guy? Uh, this is going to work better if I... This selected. Okay, uh, let's see. I've forgotten one bow. Okay, nothing here is particularly notable, so. Vampire short bow. Okay, I should grab that. Um, then you get to use. Let's unuse it if I forgot, and I'm just gonna swap them like this so I can remember. So she gets to use my unuse for the time being for this bar. Uh. That's fine. Um, all right. And now I get to... Song of Concentration is an interesting one. Meaning Spear, Merciless Spear. Yeah, okay. We're going to have a lot of... Okay. Um, let's just grab a couple of additional... Options here for me. I don't know why I have that, but, uh, and then, let's see, that's another horn bow. I have a lot of, it doesn't have a whole lot of, I guess I'll just grab the silencing longbow. Whoop, no, not. Hang on, this is my character that I needed to be doing stuff on. Shadow bows are not ideal for zealous because they are horn bows, and that means they are. Eh, I mean, it's not the worst, but you typically want your horn bows to be vampiric for spiking purposes. Okay. Um. Now, did I have? Yes. Okay. I want to drop these off with the rest of my Zen my tonics there. Fire fear shot would be appropriate for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and. Leave it, though, because I give it to a different character anyway, and yeah, okay. Um, right, that's enough time spent setting stuff up. Let's go ahead and do the thing. Uh, oh, do I need to change? Well, there'll be time at the beginning. I can look at equipment at the start of this mission. I do want to open up all of these hero panels so y'all can look at them once okay 
Yeah, I probably don't need expertise that high. I probably want more marksmanship, so. Yeah, let's just go with my marksmanship. Ten piece. There. Uh, yeah, so this is a little bit more physically heavy with the idea that it will help support um, this nonsense. Granted, this is not doing a whole lot. Aha. Uh -huh. Because the only person using adrenaline is General Morgan, but I'm just hoping my healers are sufficient. Because like Master of Whispers has some pseudo healing going on, and Zed has some pseudo healing and defense going on. It's a this is a weird neglectic team, uh, and I worry for Ogden's energy quite a lot, <laughs> frankly, and Uncoros for that matter. Of course, energy is not as bad, but reverse tax is a little bit expensive. Let's see. Don't have masters here either. That's easy enough to, to fix. Hey. Hey. Oh boy, that doesn't look great. That's okay, I'm gonna switch over to this bow. And uh, we're gonna get some orders on me and that'll make everything look better. Cool. Okay, um, the way I like to do this kind of has me going around the back. I guess I will accidentally use Troll Unguent. Probably focus on this priest here. You're running away from the ignite arrows. Okay, I mean damage looks really sweet when when I have orders on me. Otherwise, it's a little underwhelming. Ooh, Song of Concentration. Next spell used. Nope, next skill. Song must be skill. Uh, I don't use Song of Concentration very much. It is next skill. That's cool. I mean, we have a lot of condition potential because we have freaking virulence floating around. But... Um, Like, that's going to instantly boost some of that effectiveness, right? But the monk energy pars are obviously also quite low. Now, Master of Whispers does have Blood Ritual. And that's going to help. And let me tell you, those Order of Pain hits look pretty sweet. But. I'm just going to switch to the Zealous Hornbow for the moment. I'll take slightly longer range and some additional armor penetration. Taskmasters that you need to take out for the uh, bonus. Where's my forgotten horn bow? Put that there instead of these daggers. That way I can do that. I desire. 
I definitely had better energy for this bar than Acolyte Jin does because I had a soup expertise rune and stuff. I just had more expertise. That really helps. Going around the backside of this allows you to get the Taskmaster back there and the Taskmaster over here, which is why I like to go this way. Zed does yell at you about it, but you can ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Antidote Signet, so I need to remember that is an option for me. I'm gonna actually switch over here. Short bows have a much quicker like rate of fire, as you can see. So that works a little bit better if I'm not trying to spam attack skills. There's a lot of nuance to like which bow you want to use when and like, as a ranger, you kind of want, like, 30 bows just for, like, different mod and bow type configurations, probably. Probably not quite that many, but... There are five different types of bows. Uh, short, recurve, horn, flat, and long. And um, there's pros and cons to each, so... It would have been kind of neat if other weapons had the degree of, like... variety of bows, but I'm not quite sure exactly how that would work out. But, like, swords could have had one-handed and two-handed varieties, for example. Um, and have, like, benefits for two-handed sword. I, you're starting to play into, like, okay, how's this different from a hammer and stuff? It's like, okay, what, what skills do you get access to? I don't know. I just, I think that there are options you could have had. Or, like, you just want to make sure that the, the weapons are mechanically distinct enough skill-wise that they don't blend together too much um, on the other axes. I believe we have one key. You can't see it in your inventory. It's uh, an invisible thing. Hey, there's that thick to thin that we were talking about earlier. Oh, that's going to be hung on to because the tombment's worth 900 gold right now, so probably not quite that much to... But, you know, a decent amount. I wonder how much Pyre is actually using some of these traps. He's got a weird bar. I'm not a big fan of it. It's an old pre-build. So I have it in like my challenges stuff because sometimes you want to tell the AI. All right, you want to tell players so you just use really mediocre bars because it's interesting. But. I'm just going to swap over the Hornbow. Hornbow has better range than Shortbow, so... We can attack them a bit further. Boy, the explosions from Ignite Arrows trigger AI scatter if they come too quickly. And that's definitely happening here. I have X-Trapper is not a good bar. There's no confusion about that. Uh, hopefully, but... Oh, yeah, we're getting uh, Songs of Concentration a lot more regularly, just because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just because of uh, Dark Fury. I feel like Jin. Oh, I see what's happening. Zed has vengeance. That's what's happening. That's why Acolyte Jin suddenly collapse on me. Mm. Ignite Arrows just doesn't deal that much damage. You know what? Actually, bringing that one Ellie bar, I rejected the... Um, I think it had Mark of Rodgore, so it would have actually synergized with this bar really well. It's actually really convenient. There's another group that can be back there, the east, uh, with healing. So having the this group come out 
front will help prevent us from having a double monk situation, which is really nice. I'm just dealing so many small packs of damage, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, there's that group coming up now that I was talking about. There's a monk in that group. Uh, actually, there's two. And that can cause a lot of trouble. I'm winning. If your damage is kind of questionable like mine is. Where's this elegant scythe? Oh, all the way over there. Interesting. Our damage is all right, but it's not stellar. Okay, these guys want to fight us anyway, so I guess we'll have to take them down, but... Oh man, this is really causing a lot of scattering. Double monks are really irritating. Okay, we got rid of that one, so that's good at least. Well, except I'm not running triple monk. Uh, I'm only kind of running triple monk. This dead is a weird ray of judgment earth Ellie. And he doesn't have a soup earth rune, which is definitely hurting his damage. But yeah, it's definitely not known for, for damage output. I will agree with that sentiment. Oh, man. I wasn't necessarily intending to run Ivex Trapper either. Its damage is not great. <laughs> nah, we have a lot of condition pressure as part of what's going on. Yep, Ray of Judgment Earth. Yeah, he's definitely more on the defensive side. Um, well, he has Ray of Judgment. He also has uh, Magnetic Surge and Obsidian Flame. But yeah, he really, really wants the superior Earth Rune, and I just haven't run around grabbing him runes. The other thing, too, is my Ignite Arrows triggers the AI Scatter, which is inconvenient. <laughs> Basically, we have too much AI AoE Scatter. Is what's going on here? Arrows ran off. Don't want that happening. Yeah, I probably should have grabbed a different bar for him to use, but I just kind of went with that one, and I'm a little bit regretting it. I normally make him an Earth Ellie, so it would have been a bit better if I had done so. It's true. If it works, it works. I'm just not entirely convinced it does is the issue. I do want to put together more interesting bars for uh, for doing these sorts of things. I think this is actually a really fun format overall. I've not been paying super close attention to her, but I mean, I also have questions about how the AI works so it wouldn't surprise me if she's doing something silly like that. It does let her spread a lot of conditions around for whatever that's worth. Yeah, stand in this ray of judgment and all these traps and just get 
absolutely conditioned out of existence. Is she just spamming that on recharge? There's probably some nonsense in the AI that's just like looking at, oh, you have this attack available, you should do it. Yeah. Bunny Thumper, there is a Bunny Thumper bar floating around in here, so. But yeah, she should absolutely be... Like, I bet her damage is way down if she's not actually using uh, Death Blossom. So that would, that would definitely trash her damage. We should be inflicting a lot of conditions here. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe if I switch her AI to aggressive, it'll help. It's like that's pretty infuriating heat. She used Jagged Strike on something. Yeah, the AI is just like, why does it keep returning to sender? Like, it feels like she's... What the heck, Jin? Okay, her AI is just bugged all snot. Did you see that? She just walked up and started playing the freaking flute. The heck? What? Uh, AI is broken, everyone. The AI is broken. I need to go get this cell open. That just that made no freaking sense. Why would she do that? By the way, I do think going around this place uh, counterclockwise, anticlockwise, whichever that one is. Um, I know those are both the same thing. Uh, is more efficient than other ways, but your mileage may vary. I think, what the heck? I feel like she's using an AI pattern where, I think, I think what's happening is Acolyte Jin's trying to use Apply Poison. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna disable I'm gonna disable apply poison and see what the AI does. Because I have I have a sneaking suspicion I know what's going on. I think. I think I know what's going on. Hello, Jules Carry Boy. Welcome and welcome Raiders. Hope you are doing well. Hope you had a good stream. I am uh, currently attempting to figure out how the AI works. I think I figured out how the AI works. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's see. Right. Let's not walk off from this without opening it. Okay, so... What I figured out is that people have complained about the AI with Apply Poison not, like, alt, like tabbing between enemies. It's now tabbing between enemies. What's happening is she has Apply Poison on, so she's like, I need to apply poison to every enemy in this group. But once they have poison on them, she doesn't want to, like, keep doing that. So she's going to just try to apply poison. So if I disable it, then she does the dagger chain, right? That's the thing. That's the thing that I noticed. If I disable apply poison, her AI doesn't bug out. And so I think that's what's happening. As her AI, AI is like, hey, dead on stick. Thank you. Ooh, congratulations on three months. That's exciting. Um, so I think that's what's happening. I think Acolyte Jin, if she has apply poison on, is like, I need to spread poison out among everybody. So she jagged strikes and is like, oh, this person has a poison on them. I have apply poison. Therefore, I shouldn't keep attacking them because it's redundant. So she goes on to the next target. And I think that's why her AI was not working the way it um, should. I think that's what's happening there. How... Absolutely bizarre. It's not the biggest deals because I have two other ways of applying poison in this group anyway. But it's good for me to be aware of for the future. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's a fine build. It's just the AI apparently doesn't know how to use it. Because uh, the AI is... Yeah, it's way, way better without the apply poison. Because that, that means she's no longer like, oh, spread poison around everyone. Do nothing. She's actually like doing the things she's supposed to be doing. I like that build as a player. But... Uh, just means I'm going to need to be careful with apply poison. I actually do. I'm really curious now. Um, oh, uh huh. Yeah, I see if Splinter weapon changes it or not. Um, I have another bar with apply poison and reap impurities, and I'm curious to see how the AI handles that one now. We'll see if we get it in the next. We'll probably have another mission still in us today. Or two, depending upon which one I do. I'll have to look at that. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like, well, I guess there's nothing for me to do. Gonna just pull out this invisible flute I've got and start playing it. <laughs> Absolutely bizarre that was. That that was really funny. <laughs> uh. <laughs> like Jin, what were you on? I'm gonna get my preparation back up. Wait, does swapping weapons cleanse your prep? Now I'm curious about this. Okay, no. I didn't know why it would. It just happened to end at the weird timing. I didn't think it would. It wouldn't have made any sense. Wow. That's so many bonus damage numbers popping up. is great. I mean, most of them are very small. So that's not great, but... Okay, let's free these last two centaurs from their cells. One and a two. Now we can go around this way and go take out the final dudes at the center garrison. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna have to leave uh, Apply Poison disabled there. I think if you come this way early, you just can't get through the gate, by the way. I see you over there. You know what? Sure. We'll, we'll troll Unguent. Get myself some health regen. Ooh, more iron. Don't mind if I do. Uh, this Corn and Phalanx apparently had a really bad day uh, and is just limping away. Well, everything just spawned inside there. Don't know if you saw that or not. Where's the loud boom I'm used to that coming with? Part of it. I need to be... Well... We've got enough condition removal. That's not as big of an issue. A char, a dwarf, and a centaur walk into a corn fortress. <laughs> yeah. It is a good setup for a joke. Power Fear Shot is. Let's just do something about this priest, shall we? Well, Master of Whispers just suddenly had a bad moment. AI fleeing from Ignite Arrows is ridiculous. And Zed is like, what is even energy, though? At least General Morgan's doing all right. Give him that. Hey, got there. Whew, that was something. Okay, let's make sure I reclaim that dagger from her before I forget. There we go. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That would help him a lot, wouldn't it? <laughs> Uh, those are a while back, though, unfortunately, for him. Hmm. Give me the money. Exactly what I like on random junk I'm not planning on keeping. I'm just going to sell most of the stuff to the merchant. Take out this, though. I'm always surprised when shields contain tanned hide. Like, I know shields have been made out of leather before. Uh, it just kind of throws me off. Okay. Um, we got a couple of merchants over there. Let's see. Next mission. Pokemon Passage? Rylan Refuge. I think Pokemon Passage and Rylan Refuge are the next ones. Um. Hmm. Well, I haven't done Pogan at all on this character, so maybe I should go do Pogan Passage. 
That one's pretty straightforward, but. All right, leave the team. <laughs> Pip is uh, most casters' favorite nutrition. Okay, um, so let's see. What bars should I save? Do I want to keep playing this bar? Uh, I'll go ahead and save this one. And... I didn't use Blown Into the Swamp at all. Uh... I didn't use Soul Spinner. I think I'm actually going to save Blown Into the Swamp, because I think that'll be a fun one. Okay, new draft round. Uh, so we have a ritualist pet bar. You know, I think I'm going to grab that one. Um... Fevered Frustration. Yeah, let's grab this one. Oh, uh, Air of Smite is not really what I'm looking for. Let's see. Does this one have Fragility? No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to grab this one. Oh, we've got a couple. Let's grab Burning Ice. I need some monks, so let's... I'm not feeling super enthused about Blessed Covenant, but uh, I need any healers at this point. Um, Warrior Scythe Bar. Let's grab Tainted Ally. Sure. I just grab the E-Surge, or I think I grabbed the Spirit Lord. Okay. Well, the good news is um, we're going to die. Ooh, boy. Uh, okay. So I think the only rip bar, or the only Ranger bar that I picked up was my own, so I'm going to stick with that for obvious reasons. Uh, I think I'm going to grab... Let's see. I need a Necro. I don't know what Olias is set up as. He's... Specializes in curses. So I have a death magic necro and a death magic necro. Cool. Um, is either of them... Nope, they're just two death ne magic necros. Right then. Olivia, I think you have a job. Um... Norgu, what are you set up as? You're set up as Illusion, or uh, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to grab that bar. Talk. Aura is healing prayers, yeah? Yeah, okay. Um, I need another Mesmer for Daedalon. Um, I need a Ritualist. Sandra, how are things with you? Or you'll work. Uh, and... Do I want to bring this Assassin? I th think I want to bring the other. I want to bring the other ritualist. I, the thing is, I don't know that they have a pet is the issue, and I don't necessarily want to have to go grab one. So, um, I think. Okay, let's get the bars that I've chosen so far loaded on. Um, so these don't doesn't really matter which. Uh, let's give him this one I guess it just it really does not matter blown into the swamp I need blown into the swamp 
And... Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to give her blown into the swamp. My reasoning is that I want a better well of suffering. Blown into the swamp, and you get tainted ally. Which is, I think, an EW pre-build? Yeah. Uh, and then you get... Fevered Frustration. Sure. Uh, and then... We'll worry about you in a second, Takora. Oh man, I need to figure out who I'm doing with the last one. Uh, and then you get the uh, the symbols one, the Keystone Signet. Let's see. Keystone Devotion. Oh man. Enchantment stripping is so bad for him because he basically doesn't have any attributes specced in any of the things that he's doing. Uh... Oh boy, that's awkward. Uh, let's see, and then Zandra is doing Spirit Lord, which is some super generic rebuilds. No, uh, must be EW. This looks correct. Okay, so she's supporting us with this. Um. So we'll have shelter and union, right? Ay ay ay. Uh okay. So now I just need to figure out who I want for this last spot. Um Do I want <laughs> We're saved. Uh yeah, no kidding. Do I want the Ellie? Or do I want the assassin? The assassin... I think I want the Ellie. I want the area of effect damage. Okay, so let's load Burning Ice onto her. Um... Let's see. What secondary is on that? Ritualist. So let's. Here it is. Burning Ice. Uh, this plus two attributes is really nice for what these do. So yeah, this is just a bunch of stuff and setting them on fire with elemental flame. So that's great. Uh, okay. I feel 9,000% non confident in this team. But the good news is, the Cornins will be very sick. Between tainted flesh, or between rotting flesh, rotting flesh, and tainted flesh, I think the corn we're gonna there's just gonna be so much disease. Oh, I have to bring Margaret the Sly here. Okay. Uh, how do I resolve this issue? I, I I can just go do a different mission. I think that's probably the best solution. Yeah. Okay. We'll just we'll just do a different mission. So it's all right. It's all right. We don't have to do things in order. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, we have Talcora. And our Carver's Cora is Duncoro. Grand Court of let's let's do Grand Court of Sabelka. Let's just do this one instead. Uh, because I think you need to have Talcora for this one. And I think I should maybe be a little bit more Brave Lightbringery. So yeah, we'll, we'll just do Grand Court. That'll work. That'll solve all of my mistakes. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to go so badly. Yeah, we are ready. Let's go explode some Marganite corpses. I have two very redundant... Necromancers. I just want to point this out. This one knocks you over into a swamp. <laughs> uh, boy. I mean, it worked. You can't argue that that 
thing did not go over sideways. Well, the good news is my incredible lack of healing means that I have a lot of damage. Uh, apparently. So, that's good. Okay. My team's energy is awful, but... I mean, it can't be that bad. I have two Necromancers. And a dual attuning Ellie, so it's not not that bad, but it's not great. But our damage is real good. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go clear up one the blasphemy. Well, he's usually pretty fragile, so the fact that he just kind of evaporated is not really a surprise. These things are actually pretty fragile too though, which is nice. I guess spreading a lot of conditions around is highly effective. Okay, we want to stop this guy from doing shenanigans. Okay, let's go work on this. Oh, good job, Blasphemy. There we go. 156 damage. Those things have no armor. Um, I'm going to be blunt. This team's doing a heck of a lot better than I was expecting it to. So that's a thing. I'm trying to figure out why. Blow him into the swamp. Oh. Not successfully blow him into the swamp. But whatever. Well, it's suffering. Well, it's profane. Or just explode it. Yep, those are the choices. Those are the choices my necromancers are making. Okay, I'm gonna send them down there. I can do something about this. If I just stand here, I should roll on Gwent. Cool. I don't know how to feel about this team um, performing like this. Oh, you know what? I forgot to load Talcora's bar. I feel like a doofus. I don't know how much that's impacting things. But it's definitely impacting things some. 
Because Takora should be using... Uh... Takora should be using this bar instead of Healer's Boon. So, that was my mistake. I'll keep that bar then, just to make sure I have her... Is it in the next, uh, the next thing? I still want to do Pokemon Passage, so. Still, like that, this team still did surprisingly effectively. Okay, let's make sure I've got Talcora on that bar. Uh... So that's Blessed Covenant. Okay, every elite healer's covenant. Okay, she's supposed to be on that one. Uh, let's just add Talcora back in. I need Talcora and I need Margaret. Obviously, I want to save my bar. Okay, well, that team did shockingly well there. Um, and now I have Masters on Grand Court of Sabelka with whatever that mess was. Um, okay, Pokemon Passage, that should be able to round stuff out. Right? Start draft round. Okay, I'm going to grab Bunny Thumper because I want to make sure I have another Ranger Bar. Okay, we're starting to get towards bottom end of things. I guess I'll pick up Critical Disruption. Um, Hamstorm. Okay, I want this one. I want to make sure I have some monks. Triple Finale. Oh, yeah, let's grab that one. Signet Flash. Signet of Shadows. Signet of Deadly Corruption. How many conditions am I likely to be doing? Definitely some. Well, let's pick this bar, I guess. Oh, I've... Ah, but I only have... Well, I have two Paragons I can use. Yeah. Uh, I'll pick this one. Okay. So, I can also do Bunny Thumper if I want to. But I think Margaret is set up Beast Mastery. No, Margaret's not set up at all. Okay, so I'll probably run... I'll give her the... Bar, Hunter Bar that I'm using right now. And I'll load Bunny Thumper onto myself. Now that is... I think that's in here. Uh, or not. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm loading it onto myself. I can just do this. Uh, template code... Paste this bad boy and load it. There we go. I forgot. Oh, I need to go buy some skills first. Okay. Uh, I'll worry about the rest of these in the bars in a moment. I'm just going to go buy, uh, let's see. Auspicious Blow and Crude Swing. Um, I don't know. Crude Swing is either prophecies or common. Auspicious Blow, I'm not sure of offhand, though. I need a Tune Light either way. Um, and this is... Oh, do I have... Okay. The other... Hey, I heard a thing. Hello, Shade the... Thank you for the host. How y'all doing? Hope you're doing well. I am realizing I need to get some skills in order to be able to do this bar on this character. 
I'm trying to figure out how I want to arrange some other things as well. I kind of feel like... Okay, maybe I could just go this way. And... Boy, that's some tight attributes. Okay, I need crude swing and auspicious blow. Cool. Let's go to Tyria. So I can go get the skills I need for this bar that I, for some reason, do not have <coughs> these skills yet. Marganite masks also contain iron ingots for whatever reason. And then we'll go do Pogon's Passage, and that'll be where I wrap things up for the day. Why do I have run over brains in this sword? Good question. I have not the answer. Uh, I need crude swing, please. Okay, crude swing. And I'm. Is that auspicious blow? You know what? I'll just check the Eye of the North for auspicious blow. If it's not there, because I don't remember what campaign it's in off the hand. Offhand, I don't feel like looking it up. I'm being lazy. If it's not here, I'll just go to Kainang and buy it there because that's the last place I have to check uh, for Are you it. Still here? Nope, it is in fact in Kainang. So off to Kainang we go. Our business blow is good though if you're planning on using hammer like this or in general. I like my auspicious blow. Okay, this way. Um. Okay, let's see, my other, I need another monk. So let's grab, okay, well, I'm gonna grab the skill here now. Thank you. Auspicious blow. Very important for energy management. Uh, this gives me plus seven energy, which really helps with funding Rampage's one. Um. Especially because my expertise is not the highest. It'll probably be okay, but it's not ideal. Okay. Uh, back to Pogon Passage. Where we're going next. Uh, right. I wanted Ogden. Ogden... You get, which bar is this? This is Word of the Dead. Okay, Word of Healing. It'll work. Uh, and then, Shocking on Triple Finale. Yeah, let's do both of those. I feel like Triple Finale should probably go over there. He's got his bow still. Which feels a little less than optimal. So I'm going to need to do something about that. Okay. Uh, triple finale. Where is... There it is. Yeah. Make go for the eyes a little, little bit better. Okay. And then... That's definitely a spear bar, so I need to make sure it's this. Um, I don't have a random spear on this guy, so yeah, we'll just make a random spear happen on this guy. Not the ideal shield, but I don't feel like figuring out shields either right now. Do I need these daggers for anything? I'm going to hang on to the poisonous nevermore bow in that one. moment. Okay. Uh, and then you need shock and awe. Because it runs shock and awe. Uh, right then. So I can bring this assassin bar, which is a weird 
one. Uh, that I have no idea how the AI is going to use. Ooh, I do want to bring Hamstorm. So let's grab Boss, I guess? Boss is a Sword Warrior. Minus five maximum energy is probably not optimal. For a Hamstorm. Uh, but here we are. Let's just actually use Jorah instead, because she's got a sword and not minus five energy on it. Hamstorm. Okay, so now I just need one more. I can grab this. Bar. I think I'm going to grab that bar. So let's grab... Uh, Apparently Zenmai is Dagger of Mastery. Never mind. I'm not going to do... I'm going to do the other bar because, you know what? Zenmai is Dagger of Mastery, and I'm not going to squander that on that bar. So let's grab our Flurry of Blades and hope the AI uses this all right. Strange bar that it is. Okay. Um... Yeah, it just it tries to skull crack things. It's kind of what's going on here. Uh, cool. That is a team composition. That is Talcor using the bar she's supposed to have been using the previous one, but as actually now using. You can see that this is focused on enchantments because enchantments uh get cheaper but don't get negatively impacted the same way. So she's probably gonna spam a lot of very long lasting healing breezes. This is the idea. And have the weak leech signet. Hopefully Ogden's able to pick up any sort of slack that's going on. And General Morgan as well, actually. Uh, finale of Restoration. Got a couple of Go for the Eyes, which will probably help a little bit. This is very melee and Paragon heavy. All right. Uh, but we can go do it. So let's go show the Jack of Truths what we've got uh, by infiltrating Gandara. This is not the most combat heavy, but there's a lot of combat at the end, so we'll see how this kind of goes. Then I'll save the template draft. Haha, <laughs> Jorah does not get a costume. So they don't fit her, because she is Norn. And Hamstorm. Good old Hamstorm. Aetherion is a phoenix. Aetherion. Raised him myself. Something like that. All right. Well, let's do some bonus objectives. Uh, let's start by talking to Captain Nonkos. Telling him that these prisoners are being transferred. That's what's happening, I guess. Uh, we need to go fight this demon spawn. He's very angry at them. It goes down very quickly. Uh... Then we go up to the vault. That's the next location. So does she automatically drop Healer's Covenant? How does the AI handle Healer's Covenant? An interesting question. I haven't thought about that one. Has a question before. I like that they tell you that he's setting up an ambush. Now we need to talk to Guard Linko. Tell them that they can be relieved of duty and then promptly abandon duty. 
just how we roll, you know? Uh, and then we hope we don't get wrecked by corn and archers having whirling defense, I suppose. Optional, take over duty for some guards. Yep. And now I'm leaving. Enjoy. This first, this mission kind of comes in two halves. This first half is just kind of wandering around Gandara. Probably pretty good for cartography, actually. We could probably go all the way over there or something. Fully authorized. Good thing I hit that option because I did that very quickly. There's a monk with protective scali. You know what's up. And resilient weapon. <laughs> Needs to pair with a resilient weapon. And so every moving it from you will will make it you survive it better. Talkor will remove it from you eventually. Uh, glad I have antidote signet. That's a good backup for me to have. This is. Not 100% traditional bunny thumper, uh, just because you wouldn't normally have run crude swing back in the day. And obviously, if you're in PvP, you need some other things. Hey, Cornyn Bowman. some guards over here that we also need to clear out. Boy, that helps with energy so much, Auspicious does. Now this, this is the, uh, uh, I'll have to look at that later. Uh, and you go, but I'll be curious to see. This is the part where you have to make sure you turn the correct way. And, uh, and not accidentally go up the stairs. Okay. Chris and you just ran over to Breakers and you saw a chest. Ooh. What was in this chest? Did it taunt you? I mean, I'm, I'm glad I have the shock-awe combo going on over here, because I might need it against some of these. Check out the screenshot after the stream because I'm going to be wrapping up fairly soon. Mm, tricky section, hard mode. Yeah, this section can be. It's it's easy to get over overwhelmed here. Because like right here, you can end up aggroing more than you want to. Guard the business. Yeah, it's really, really hard to avoid a double aggro here. We've clearly not succeeded in doing. On the other hand, I do have a fabulous uh, amount of burning I can inflict. Oh. 
This is actually a spot where it might be a good idea to have a zealous weapon. Okay, let's see. What are you saying? What kind of the group aggroes off healing? They're in a group. Does come up far though. You should catch them at the bridge and end. Yeah, I feel like you could position yourself well to maybe reduce the chance of some of that aggro. I have no idea how my team's been doing, but uh, apparently Ogden's energy is good, so I don't know. Oh man, we have so much daze capability in this group though. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, plus I'm getting extra energy from the whatever nonsense. Uh, friggin' the triple finale build is doing. Ah, uh, boy. Well, that went fairly smoothly. I have no idea how well anybody's doing because I'm not paying attention to anybody's bars. I'm, like, too preoccupied with executing on mine. But I know there's a bunch of knockdowns happening. Like, this team configuration ended up having just, like, a ludicrous number of knockdowns, so that's pretty sweet. And my energy is actually working pretty well. So Auspicious is doing its job. I suspect quite a few awes are happening. Not always necessary, but that's nice. Shield top is not going to help me a whole lot against... Well, I guess I got a couple of, couple of Paragons, but... Probably help against those. Excellent. Mm. Yes, group up for me. See what that gets you. <laughs> Friggin' the amount of days this team has access to is kind of ridiculous, and I love it. Ooh, Zenmai did not love that, though. The other hand, maybe we got uh, the shock up. Shock and off combo? Okay, well, boss down. That's important because those LA bosses are very scary. Oh, one of the Sunspear prisoners died. I think it'll be fine. Here, I think that's everything. We lost a Sunspear prisoner. But uh, overall, that, that went pretty well. That went pretty well. Well, then. Uh, cool. So that that went surprisingly well uh, with whatever that weird oddity was of a team. Uh, this whole thing's been about making weird teams, though. Uh, and now I am, like, five missions into this. So 
this was a lot of fun. Uh, I will be back. This is, this is all zit, the end of the stream. Uh, you can get the tool if you are interested in it over here. There's a download link. Uh, it is for Windows uh, desktop. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. I'll be back on Tuesday because today is Saturday, so that's how days of the week work. Tuesday follows Saturday, and Saturday follows Tuesday. But the next stream will be uh, will be Tuesday. I'll probably do some more, like, just different combinations of things uh, and continue doing stuff. It'll be fun. Uh, so until then, everyone, thank you very much for watching. You can follow me in the follow button wherever it's located on your device uh, to get notified when I go live or uh, join my Discord server. I also notify there. Um, and uh, wraps everything up. So thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, everyone, take care. Goodbye.